Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the Cloaks of Minehelm, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons stream with Penny Dragon Games. Uh, I'm Ben, I am your DM and the ringmaster <laughs> for tonight. Uh, and uh, with me I've got my uh, some of the usual some of the usual crew, some of the usual cloaks, but um, we have new new party member with us, new permanent party member, Nico, who uh, we'll be introducing in, uh, in just a minute there. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, been away uh, for a while over the holidays, so great to be back. Um, you know, f uh, for those of us who were watching before the break, and hi to any uh, any new any new viewers. Uh, so just to catch everybody up, uh, Clerks of Minehelm uh, D and D stream follows uh, the Brown Cloaks of the City of Minehelm. They are the lowest rung on the the sort of the the City Watch, uh, you know, local law enforcement ladder. They patrol the sewers. They do all the dirty jobs that nobody else wants to do. Um, and yeah, they're just they're the lowest of the low, but uh, we love them all, <laughs> you know, or well, you know, we uh, <laughs> we, we hate to love them. Um, and yeah, where we left off, we lost uh, two of our permanent party members to retirement, thankfully not to, um, you know, giant shit monsters down in the sewers uh, or anything. <laughs> so um, not for yeah, lack of we, trying on your part. No, of course not. No, so we uh, the the party was dealt a, a little bit of an emotional blow, and uh, we had some twists and turns and cliffhangers um, at the end of the the holiday break. Uh, but, but no we, beheaded uh, mice. No, no beheaded mice. Uh, which is a reference to, uh, yeah, um, Friday's game of Humblewood, which I uh, play with with Nico actually, um, and yeah, we'll we'll get into that uh, once we jump into gameplay. But just before. Uh, we go down uh, and do intros. Um, thank you anyway for joining the joining the stream. Uh, you can catch uh, previous episodes of Cloaks on the Penny Dragon Games YouTube channel. There is a playlist for Brown Cloaks, um, lovingly put together by uh, Christian, our uh, our resident tech wizard. Um, and yeah, also uh, we've got lots of other games on the channel. On Tuesday, we'll be coming back with uh, DM John's game. Uh, Fellowship of the Fallen. So, having survived another group of orcs, the Fellowship of the Fallen continue to explore the woodland manse at the behest of Falcon, and uh, we'll find out, uh, you know, what they find and what happens next. And then on Friday, uh, the uh, the fantastic DM Dave is back with the the Sophron Saga for uh, episode nine. So, the heroes of Stomerton are hot on the trail of a group of bandits that may or may not be responsible for the disappearance of a local inventor. Uh, so we can watch the gang pick up where they left off, right at the front door of a bandit hideout. And then we've also got uh, another new Friday stream on the alternating week. Uh, I'm sorry, not another new Friday stream. We have uh, Richard's Humblewood game. So if you like Woodland Critters, um, you know, but Woodland Critters with lots of blood and violence. I got decapitated uh, on Friday. So, you know, that's all cool. <laughs> and... Uh, then next Sunday, uh, DM Mark is going to be back with episode two of our new stream, The Violet Madness. Um, but with all that out of the way, uh, you're sick of listening to me, I'm sure. So I'm just going to go around and uh, we'll do some intros and tell us uh, who we've got and, and who you're playing. And I'm going to start, uh, who I see to my top left, um, Kyle. Why don't you take it away? So uh, I'm returning this year as, once again, Tram Scribe, also known as Pouches, uh, one of the little troublemakers of the cloaks, uh, uh, playing a half-elf who's just a little bit too in love with magic. He likes it just a little bit too much for most mm. people's taste and a lot too much for many, many more. Yeah, it's, it, it's a little, um, you know, it's, it's, it's getting a little restraining ordery. You know, with pouches and magic. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but he likes um, things that go boom. Not as much as yeah. other people like things that go boom. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, um, she loves things that go boom. <laughs> yeah, in um, in um, we're gonna get along of, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in in the city of Minehelm and and beyond, you know, in in its in its jurisdiction, uh, magic is heavily regulated, um, and generally, you're not allowed to practice it openly unless uh you graduated or have a license from the college of law keep 
but it's which it's pouches more than a college. does not have <laughs> pouches does not have no um pouches is an underground wizard as uh, most most mages are in Minehelm. uh so let me see up oh, next i have what to say I, I just have one word fluffinata fluffinata <laughs> 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 and if you watch Critical Role, you'll understand what, what happens when you have a wizard who can cast fire spells and an alchemist that can make black powder. <laughs> yes, things. Um, yeah, things get very. Uh, <laughs> things get. Yeah, things get very uh, troublesome for the GM. <laughs> so, and uh, the rest of the players, though. So it's it's all good. It balances out. Everyone is is charred equally, you know. Um, but uh, next, uh, Fona, can you tell us uh, who you're playing? Hey, so I play Andy, who is a human rogue. Uh, she's here in the brown cloaks on work release from prison. Uh, she got into a little bit of trouble with the B&E and uh, got sent down and took the option to go join the ship brigade to get out of, uh, get out of the cell. So, yeah, she... Uh, obviously likes to rob things being a rogue and um she has a little kitty cat called ember that navani mm. gave her or found for her after she tried to um adopt i suppose uh uh a grimishka as her pet and uh yeah, yeah that didn't work out so well so yeah, yeah she's got ember yeah the grimishka which which you had had dubbed soot which looked like like a sphinx cat from hell, um, and yeah, so she had to give you find you a new cat because she kind of squished your the cat you were trying to get with a warhammer. So <laughs> pretty, pretty brutally squished her right in front of me. Uh, yeah. that, that was um, that was definitely mentally scarring at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Cruel to be kind. That Grimishka what was probably mentally would have scarring was the sleep. fact that I cast a spell on it and I got twelve gr more Grimishkas. Oh yes, it has an allergic reaction to magic. And it kind of mm -hmm. multiplies like like gremlins. Um, but speaking of other party members making terrible decisions and wreaking havoc and breaking the law, uh, Boyd, <laughs> tell us about your exasperated character. Uh, what's up, folks? Uh, I'm Boyd, and I'll be playing Durrell Stonehill. Um, let's see, he's, he's like a young, naive dwarf. He gets uncontrollably agitated whenever he crawls through dungeons. He's a pugilist, which is a homebrew class made by Benjamin Hoffman. It's like a strength-based monk kind of thing, but more focusing on a boxer type person um, rather than a martial artist. Uh, he loves tales of old adventurers and is obsessed with them like a teen loves Spider-Man. Um, he likes to throw hands, and he also swears a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's got a big old rock fist as well. <laughs> he's Sometimes got a magic. He he's got a magic, <laughs> yeah, magic wrestling belt that uh, seems to have given him sort of earth earth element powers. Um, and uh, last, but certainly not least, uh, our newest our newest uh, poor recruit to the Brown Cloaks, uh, Nico. Hello, uh, I'm Nico. I play uh, Petri. <laughs> he is a elf, uh, alchemist, um, artificer alchemist, and he comes from a very well-known affluent family. Uh, his parents died very young and he was an orphan and he grew up in the guild and he is a exceptionally gifted and talented uh alchemist but he's also he very humble a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he uh he liked to get into trouble and he found through because of who his parents were he started getting all sorts of great interesting clients who liked his potions a little spicier than the guild allowed him to uh make within the rules and he ended up getting caught and he is now serving out his time with the brown cloaks to redeem himself to rejoin the guild or is he he might have ulterior motives yeah and um just as like a little uh a point so we nika decided that uh petri um 
is um and is an elf but just like rules wise um i think if you're are we if can we talk about this nico i don't know oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah i forgot to touch on that i can yeah yeah no 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 i just me i just thought it was interesting that we're gonna go that uh rules wise patree is a gnome because in uh, this uh, magical explosion patree is has been um sort Wait, of deformed. this kind of disfigured and deformed from there's this explosion so um has uh yeah is uh sort of has been stunted and yeah scarred and so is an elf mm -hmm. but uh that didn't have a shannery necklace to begin with so is um... he, he, think of uh you know once legless now creature from harry potter you know he yeah. a little few too many experiments gone wrong over the years and he's just kind of this little scarred stunted thing mm. but he's got the yeah. charm of yeah, so wow, he's, so he's, you, does, you does, skip does the golem phase entirely. Yeah, sorry, key, key part of, of yeah. who he is. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he didn't he quite like the bangles as well. Uh, I think he, uh, I think he would, they would have forced him to, uh, when yeah, when you're kind of forced into the, the brown cloaks, you have your kind of uh ankle bracelet you know or wrist bracelet you know um so, wait, so... I, i'm the only one in the party that sh is not like i'm practicing illegal magic and i'm the one in the party not being forced to be here uh you can you can you can do something to become one of the bracelet bros you know <laughs> no i'm good thanks yeah, exactly um so yeah um that is oh sorry nico is it um is it uh patri uh, with or without the E, is it just P apostrophe, or is oh, it P? Uh, doesn't matter. Let's do just know. P apostrophe T. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, tree. I like tree. So um, yeah, I have given. Uh, I just got your little placeholder token. So uh, yeah, without uh, then, without any further ado, uh, on to the matter at hand. So it has been uh, since we last left off um, some uh, you know some uh, you, some things have happened uh, but you're all now uh, all four of you are gathered in the briefing room uh, waiting for your sergeant uh, Leia Stein and uh, the captain Gondon Galloway but uh, in the days prior uh, much has uh, has changed for a lot of you um, Doral um well not not in the days prior but in the weeks prior you, you know doral had lost his his mentor his his training master um apparently at the hands of some red tattooed goliath um who you've been trying to find and and only days before you got word that he had been fighting uh in one of the death pits of the butchers the violent gang that hold these uh illegal uh, no holds barred uh, fighting arenas where you know uh, humanoids are pitted against each other and against monsters and you know it's all it's all good you know blood sport uh, pouches um, after a visit to Lord Puddle was uh, given something Lord Puddle had dug up which was a, a broken Shanri necklace uh, a necklace that elves have to wear uh, in order to maintain their longevity or else they will age at a, at a more human rate. Uh, it was a broken Shanri necklace which bore a mark uh, the same um, as his father's family crest. Uh, and Andy, in the days prior, was uh, approached by a man in a fish market and um, given an ultimatum by this uh, a man belonging to the butcher's uh, the gang that she um, uh, let's put it lightly and say pissed off in her uh, <laughs> in uh, in her criminal exploits um, before the brown cloaks and uh, yes uh, the 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 cloaks themselves the party uh, have had a bit of a bit of a run in with butchers having busted up one of their alchemy rings um, and uh, having I think. Uh, killed or 
subdued um, a halfling agent of theirs who was masquerading as a cloak. So the, the butcher's not a big fan of Andy or the rest of you, uh, but you were given a, an ultimatum or a proposition or whatever you want to call it to uh, get that little bracelet off your wrist and get you your freedom from the brown cloaks. And in exchange, all you had to do was kill uh, Pouches and Doral, <laughs> the remaining, uh, you know, your remaining friends. Uh, you know, so it's 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 been uh, just three days since uh, Andy had that meeting and only two days since all of you were first introduced to your new squad mate. So dismissed from their previous squad, uh, the captain thought that they'd be uh, better suited to you lot, <laughs> uh, as he put it. So you'll find yourselves uh, staring at the back of this uh, uh, this uh, this new recruit uh, and remembering the day you met and the first mission that all of you undertook together. So doing a Wayne's World doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, flashback while you wait in the briefing room. Uh, Petri, you find yourself at the end of your fortnightly uh, probation period. You've been summoned by the captain, Gondon Galloway, a man, a human man, uh, looks to be in about his late 50s, uh, balding, black hair, thick beard, weathered, um, standing proudly uh, on, his, on his peg leg. Uh, this curmudgeonly tenacious old man that, that people have nicknamed the headsman because of his disciplinary attitude, but also because of the big halberd that he wields. And he is, he's summoned uh, Petri and uh, he's looking, mm. uh, looking down at you and uh, he's having a chat about uh, you uh, almost melting your comrade's face with checks notes. There's no, splash back um, and it says that he is uh, transferring you to a different squad and has sent you to report to Sergeant Stein in the sparring yard so as you emerge into the sparring yard you see uh, a, uh, a human woman uh, about her late 40s short stout uh, red hair streaked with grey uh, tied back in a bun piercing blue eyes and she is um sort of walking with her hands kind of behind her back and she's looking at people sparring and she's kind of circling or, you know, circling around three figures. There is a a stout dwarf who is uh, kind of doing boxing drills. He's punching a stuffed, you know, a mannequin on a on a post. Um, there is a woman, uh, looks, looks maybe human woman. It's difficult to tell. She's got a hood up who is... Uh, peppering a, a target with arrow after arrow. Um, and then you see clouds of dirt being knocked up um, as uh, somebody uh, in uh, little, no armor or anything, just there with his brown cloak, is shooting little darts of magical force from his hand and sort of weaving them through, um, through various obstacles to, to hit a target. And yeah. But uh, Sergeant Stein is circling these people and she sees you approaching and the three of you, she kind of, you know, clicks her fingers and then Patrie, can, you can wander up to these three. my character? Yeah, you yeah. notice that a, a, there's a rope tied around his ankle to a stake because he's trying to like cast invisibility twice and disappear from training. <laughs> she, she's gotten fed up and so she's tied yeah. him down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's checking periodically to make sure he's still there. And she's just, just <clears throat> form up. And oh, um, look, I'll get when, she, as when, I she, can. when she clicks and tells us to form up, Andy will still have her bow out and she'll kind of look. If I, I should actually pull my hair down, hang on. <laughs> get your emo, your she's gonna like Andy. look, and one eye will kind of peek between the bangs and just kind of. <laughs> And then very kind of sullenly sort of do that thing with, you know, like, fine. And she'll still be holding her bow and she'll kind of trudge over to sort of near to where Tram is. Yeah, um, Leia, Leia Stein, uh, the uh, mother of five, is uh, 
you know, well used to this kind of behavior <laughs> at home and at work. So <laughs> she has no patience for it um, and just sort of snaps her fingers again at you. Um, I think Patri was not pleased with the reassignment, but seeing you riffraff, he's a little more pleased, I'm pretty sure. Mm. We're all going to be pretty good friends. <laughs> Looking through of you says, Right, you lot, and then she's looking at you, Patrice. And she says, "says uh, you lot, meet your new squad mate, Patrice." <laughs> she kind of, you know, he's a uh, tree. He's a tree. I- I'm just gonna be like bless you. <laughs> it's Patrice, actually. Of, uh, yeah. Patrice. Yeah. Pa- okay. I, I, I don't you're gonna expect... get a, you're gonna get a, a scanned look like I don't head. I don't expect any of you lot to get it right Eat. it's fine and back up to your head and she's gonna tilt her head a little because she's checking to see like how many pockets and things you have any pouches mm. just <laughs> taking an assessment of what do you look like yeah, so he's this pretty gnarly little you know doesn't really have a whole lot on him but you can tell that he's really crafty. Like you can almost hear the wheels in his head just turning as he's sort of inspecting you guys, looking you up and down. <laughs> quite, quite pleased with what he sees, though. I think uh, I'll, he'll hobble forward and just say, "I think this will work. This will do." This will. I tell that that there's some elvish blood in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my parents. And then he's just gonna trail off. He doesn't really. Yeah, she says she's like. Pouting. Oh no, no! I, I mean, like from purely like looking. Yeah. She says, oh, um, right, yeah, pouches leave the young man's blood alone. <laughs> no, 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 like, uh, purely, like, a look, and then I'm, if, if I can, I'll probably say something in Elvish just to see if there's some understanding there. Oh, yeah, that was pouches internally saying, Yeah, like, internal dialogue. Of, can I can I see that mm-hmm. from, like, a purely, like, oh, yeah, I can see those ears. There's some elf mm-hmm. in there. And then I'll mm-hmm. say something like, you're a little bit short for an elf, but in elvish, and see if what happens. Uh, oh, what are you? Um, what do you say back? This so, is, um, yeah, when when when, is... when, tra- when Tram says that, in a, in a sort of like almost like trying to give an elbow dig, but like not, Andy can say elves can be short too. In a burst. Of oh elf. no no, th- this is an elvish. So unless you yeah speak no, elvish. I, I I can speak elvish, so you'll get a little Uh-oh. burst of like Shh, elves can be short too. <laughs> I feel like Patrice meant- would snap back with something exceptionally witty and clever, but I'm not, you know, I'm still on my first coffee. Ah, Joral. <laughs> Joral. <laughs> I don't know Joral. enough of what you look like, but he'd comment on something about something oh, perfect like, little snapback. Just back. think like skinny, ma- like skinny math nerd with like a thousand spell components in every pouch all over his clothing. Joral, you're right. fucked. They have their own language. <laughs> <laughs> you can't speak. <laughs> They're gonna be scheming. Uh, um, and but just to retort to like Andy being like, I'll just say like in in scratch, I'll be like, why don't you just go steal something already? <laughs> like just leave me alone, go steal something. I blow you a raspberry. <laughs> I think I think the tree's just gonna just... casually like he'll say, well, you know, my my mother was a little short, I suppose, for an elf, and then just walk around inspecting the place. Like he's so he says, oh. Yeah. As far as he's concerned, he's still the tall, handsome, charming, you know, uh, sergeant. Yeah. Elf he was. Well, us here to say something, I presume, and I try and cut over everyone. Yeah. Daryl, is... Daryl, how high do you think he can jump? Uh, job, Andy. Yeah, my patience is also short, uh, Andy. <laughs> then she says, "Well, uh, Patrie, fairly new recruit, was just passed probation." Uh, he was with Donville, but uh, he's been transferred to your squad. And uh, she points to a um, a uh, one of these um, sparring, you know, uh, mannequins. This wooden post with uh, you know stuffed sackcloth kind of body limply hanging from it, with a little target on its chest. This is uh, Patrie. Says, uh, show them. Uh, Show them why you've been transferred to their squad. And is like pointing at this, you know, 
target to like show us show them what you got. <laughs> um, Sam okay. Sam like, raise an eyebrow at Andy. Oh, he'll just turn to look at you guys and just kind of shrug and say, "I don't know what you're talking about." And somehow behind him, you just the the thing just erupts in in green flame. <laughs> He will park right up at that. He'll just he'll he's, he'll he'll casual flick of his wrist or something behind and just he's a little yeah. cheeky fucker. Yeah. <laughs> like patches will like try to play it cool, but you'll you'll kind of see it's like like you know when like a kid has stolen a cookie and you're like, did you steal that cookie? And he's like, and the kid's like, no, but like the grin is coming in. It's like that. It's like <laughs> I found a new friend who can blow shit up with me. This is great. Yeah, so it's just I- like. Did I manage to catch adorable. like Durrell's obsessed with adventurers and knows how all them work? And he's like, "How did she cast the spell? Did did she do it subtly in a way I couldn't see, or was it that she had a component <laughs> in her hand? Well, in, in how exactly did she cast this thing?" So um, with uh, Peachy's, uh, he's all he's got all sorts of little things hidden in his pockets. <laughs> Yeah, I, I imagine Pitchery could, with his hands behind his back, kind of mix some... I'm, I'm looking, because we kind of figured this out yesterday, didn't we? He's got little uh, little vials yeah, he, of all sorts of casts, stuff. That... Yeah, he casts with alchemist supplies, because you have to do it with the tool as an artificer. So I guess mm-hmm. he, like, you know, mixes and shakes things and, you know, does little kind of um, quick alchemy, um, mm-hmm. quick maths. I think he's gonna he'll he'll mutter something under his breath and then shrug again. Like, can can he like very quietly cast grease by the door? Just undetected and by try the and door, get just... the captain, his new captain or whoever to, uh, to slip on her way out. Oh, sure. I mean <laughs> it's gonna be hang on, is let me see, is grease. He wants to make a decent Verbal. enough impression with his new friends. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you might okay. Grease needs so you're gonna have to do something with your hands and the, the spell, and you also need to speak some magic words for grease. Um, Poor grinder so if you butter. Can think of a suitable, like, yeah, I mean, give me, give me, give me a deception check. To see. Uh, if you can, like, okay, I'm reading grease. It doesn't breath. say. Yeah, components, verbal, VSM. So verbal somatic and material oh there gotcha okay um he'll just he'll just mutter like you know <laughs> smooth smooth steps sucker is his little spell <laughs> he's gonna... the girl's face completely changes from one of complete doubt to impressed <laughs> we'll do it in such a way that you guys can see, but the whoever is in charge can. Yeah. So just yeah. Uh, yeah. Give me. Uh, just give me. A oh, sorry. What was it? Check. Just deception to, check. give me deception just to see if uh, you know. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You you pass it off as um, you know as like Oops. a cough. You know. You're like. <laughs> you know and, and then suddenly you 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 feel the spell click and go off and the the door behind stein out of the uh sparring yard and kind of back into the barracks it has been uh it has been nicely greased <laughs> all right um i can't see where i had um advantage on on the character sheet is that what uh, it was? It, it rolled twice? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, it might just be clicked on as New character like... sheet, so just go to the little gear on the end. Yeah. And then in the third column, you'll see roll. I think it's it's got a little tick box that says NPC. Oh, always roll below. advantage. Yeah, just put that to advantage. Oh, yeah. Toggle. I don't know why roll 20 just defaults to always roll advantage, but it yeah, does. Yeah, I always forget that. I don't know why it... It's yeah, so strange. Okay, yeah, now it toggled the little thing. Okay. Yeah, okay. it must be. Like, I presume it's like they. I presume from surveys or whatever, it's what most people prefer. But maybe not. I don't know if it's like a thing that people voted on or not. But I, I hate it. <laughs> to have it by default, not because like if you need to roll advantage, mm. you can always just roll twice. Like. Yeah. So or if it's with a quick toggle, setup, it's pretty easy to just clog. Yeah, yeah, the toggle. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but. 
yeah, you, um, sorry, what am I doing? You greased the door. I lost my notes. Yeah, no, the door was greased. Sorry, I was checking something. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, well, with, with that, she says, well, uh, she says, just looking, she's like, well, I mean, you can see why, uh, why I've been lumped with, uh, yet another one, uh, and like kind of looks at pouches, like <laughs> another one of, uh, I, I just try to like put on my best, like innocent face. Like I'm so sweet and delightful. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I, yeah. I am the joy in her life. She's... Yeah. She has f- five, uh, you know, five children from the drains, you know, five, <laughs> you know, Kids growing up in that neighborhood are uh, kind of <laughs> pretty rough and tumble. So I think she's she's used to that cheeky grin, you know. She's like, yeah, yeah. Um, Which it, it occurs to me again, like remembering she has five kids. That at some point I'm going to go around to her house and teach them all like <laughs> pressed digitation or something, and just watch <laughs> chaos reign in that household. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to come into work Monday morning and get a warhammer to the face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, she's a, like a mace. This is like a mace that I hit the she. Um, Probably the only reason I haven't done it yet. She just taps the head of the mace and looks at you in the eye and then turns and uh, she's like, right, well. Uh, no, that, but that was my internal dialogue. I wasn't going to tell her I'm going to do that. Oh, no, she's just looking at your face like your grin. <laughs> and it's like tapping the mace. <laughs> just yeah. like, and she... Uh, she says, right, she says, you know, well, I'll leave you to it. And she says, I got, you know, uh, I got paperwork to do. And she turns and starts heading towards the door. And what is Patrice? It's a deck save, I think, right? For Greece. Um, it's a deck save. We all eagerly watch on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, she's uh, pretending not to pay attention 14 yeah fuck uh that's a two so you just awesome hear this <laughs> a crash you hear the sound of chain mail <laughs> rattle you hear a pop uh and she uh lets out uh a sort of a, a, a pained grunt and what is yeah so falls prone and then she's like like is struggling to kind of like get up uh but eventually sits up and pushes herself up the mud and it's it's covered and she just when you when you hurry that's when accidents happen she very slowly Andy on the back and just die laughing Ah! Yeah, so watch your step there. Floor looks a little slippery. And she kind of by this point, Patches, the... by the way, has cast invisibility. Yeah, he's still there, but he's no longer inside. <laughs> he's like invisibility all... dropped by. Yeah, it's all mud. You know, it's wet mud, so she can't prove that anything happened. So she's like, I just, she I kind just of rush up the Petri, uh, and I'm like, holy shit. Uh, are you an she assumes pouches did it. He's he went invisible right after she <laughs> slipped, <laughs> and she's like looking around for him and kind of like everyone and assumes then, pouches did it. So he he's gotten very good at being not there when things happen. Yeah, and she she kind of starts limping off into the building. I'll call her. You might want to put some mice on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, for Jural, I'll bring out one of my little green flasks and I'll just shake it at his question. It's the same color that the flames, shit. I mean, the acid fire or whatever. I, do you have any idea how rare you are? Well, you know. Oh, While I'm invisible, by the way. It's not a I skill like, to do what, what I, I do. mean. Paladins, fighters, they come and go, you know, but you don't see an alchemist every day. Right? I know. Girl. Or an artificer, oh, I mean. An yeah. artificer. I mean, <laughs> there was, I heard of one of them in the city I came from. Worked for some guild or something. Really gifted. Never met him. I've only no. heard about you folk. 
Hmm. Yeah, I think I've heard of him too. He's just gonna walk away. He's, you know. Is Watson so with you? I, I just was being a fangirl and look at Andy yeah. and say, "I'm a, I'm at an art professor." Yeah, I, I, I got that. Yeah. yeah. I he's, him, he's really excited. While Dora is being a fan girl, I'm going to use my invisibility for fun. And the rope's just yeah. going to like wind its way around his ankle and I'm just going to like tie it off. And then I'm going to leave. <laughs> Still invisible. Around whose okay, ankle? I'll... Around Dora. Sure. Um, make uh, Dora, you make a perception check and uh, pouches you make sleight of hand. So you can mm. you... Uh... Well, can I do it with advantage since I'm not in sight? Uh, sure, because if you can sneak up behind him. Cool. Cool. One. <laughs> yeah, okay. Unfortunately, there is a, there's now a rope has been sort of secured around your ankle. So, uh, Nick, um, Nico, is, is Watson with Petri? Or no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. How should we have him enter? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's all I'm wondering. It, it's you can you can if you choose to summon him. The yeah, you know. I don't I don't think he's out yet. Okay, I'll yeah, wait so for just, a special moment. He he is he is he's on the scene, the but he's he's on the scene, but he's he's not currently with you, so he, he can be on the scene. What should he be? Maybe I'll make him like a little yeah. contraption or something that he could uh, that he folds into that I can. I mean, he could just be in your room or, or in your cloak. Yeah, I need to read more about. About this case. He's he's tiny, I think, so he could be in your in your like under your cloak or he could okay. you know he could be he could yeah, be in your, he could be in your bunk like um but well, I'll use my invisibility the rest of my hour of invisibility invisibility to just kind of investigate my new party member. I'll just follow him around and be like what what is this new person about? Okay. Uh Give me an insight check. And um, Petri, you give me a deception check. Like, I, I just want to see what this person does. <laughs> mm. Great. Uh, great, great, great interaction between the two of us. Nice. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I don't know if it's up nico would on your settings on roll 20 uh where is it now um uh on your settings there it says dice options um if it's not i don't know if it's up there but would you click on enable 3d dice and automatically roll 3d dice if they aren't clicked on i forgot to uh, to say that Okay. Yep. Got it. Also, you can you can if you want at any point you can change a little. Uh, I think you can change a little color like next to your name on the bottom, so that will change what color your dice are. Um, it defaults to that color, so I made your token that the same mm -hmm. kind of magenta, but uh, okay. it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, yeah, it's 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 tricky, you know. Um, it's not very inside. There's not not much has been been given away. Uh, Petri is pretty secretive, um, pretty set. Well, you know, or is at least more secretive than you were insightful. <laughs> Very secretive might not have been. But uh, yeah, you, um, uh, at certain times you hear them talking. It seems like they're t talking to themselves, like looking down into their cloak and like talking <laughs> seemingly to themselves. Um, it's only their voice. But otherwise, um, that's it. Every so often, you see him kind of take out a vial and kind of shake it, you know, hold it up to the light. Uh, I'm always taking samples, the walls, swiping things, mm. putting them in vials, collecting just every little surface, little puddles, everything. I'm just constantly yeah. Yeah. grabbing little bits but, um, of dirt. And... Andy has just yeah. gone back to firing arrows, but like constantly sort of keeping an eye as Petrie moves around the yard and it's like, this person is such a weirdo. It's her thought process, uh, but she's definitely kind of 
sort of a weird assessment, just watching what you're doing and trying to figure out what she thinks. Uh, I thought the tree like left. Like, mm, going around the I yard don't... and stuff, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I think I'm still. Oh, in that Captain case, the left. I, I, I want to watch, but I want to also like continue to use the invisibility to like mess with the other two. Like I would, I would when as Andy fires, I would be like stealing the arrows out of her, out of her quiver. And I feel that, and then try to punch the air where I think he is. I'm like perception, one by one. Perception versus uh, stealth with advantage. Boy, you go to move away, and then you trip and fall face first as you. I, I was just gonna say, uh, he claps, closed a notebook, or he scribbled down <laughs> yeah, yeah. about the situation, and he just begins to walk off towards his pals and pets. Okay, Tram. <laughs> Let's see if you get punched. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I'm uh, there. That, that's that's it. Now you're gonna try and hit me still. Uh, well, no, I mean. Well, yeah, it's like, you know he's there. You can uh, give a, an attack roll with disadvantage just to sort of elbow back. And Doral as well. I mean, you just trip over and there's pouches rope tied to your ankle. So make of that what you hit. will, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, you, you just hear a little bit of <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so one, one he looks from like he's middle of nowhere. Kicks the thing off his ankle and then, like, in a sweeping motion, uh, moves his hands from up here to down at his sides, and all the dirt and dust on him actually just falls to the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Breathes heavily and stamps a foot, and the rock sort of the sort of shimmer around him and he starts looking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so after that, uh, rather eventful introduction, <laughs> um, so you know, uh, the uh we 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 moving forward to uh moving forward in the flashback to the first mission that uh each of you uh undertook together uh just the, the following day th there had been for the last like few weeks um so. some children had, oh, okay, some some children uh had gone missing um, in the drains, there'd been some disappearances, um, you know, over, I mean, at, at, well, I say weeks, but I mean, at this point, it was closer to about two months. And most recently, um, about six days ago, um, a little girl, human girl called Ellie Potts went missing, six years old. And um, this, uh, this, Basically, after this investigation, there had been whispers throughout the drains amongst the, the children of, you know, monsters, frightened whispers about this some monster, but uh, also kind of curious whispers about someone that the children were calling Auntie Ethel, you know, and sort of, you know, oh, you know, it's like, if you go see, you know, Auntie Ethel and this kind of, you, you know, given treats and, and, you know, it's very enticing to to poor children around around the drains, but uh, with six year old Ellie Potts uh, having gone uh, missing most recently, um, you uh, you were basically given uh, some intel that other you know cloaks members and and all of the brown cloaks had gathered, where they think they have have tracked have tracked um, Ellie down. Or that they uh, they know where she might be, and your squad was basically sent to the scene to to investigate. And um, where they've tracked it to is you, all four of you had made your way to uh, a, 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 like the drains is pretty overly populated, but this is kind of less populated. Um, it's a very um, waterlogged flooded section particularly flooded section of the drains uh and all four of you are now standing outside of this lopsided crumbling uh, old theater um where apparently uh, some of the local children um 
have said that they saw Auntie Ethel take Ellie um, a few days ago, and finally, we, you know, it's, it's led the cloaks here, and they sent you out. So this this old theater stands before you. Um, um, so once we were assigned this mission, but before we, be in the time before we actually showed up to this spot, um, would I have had time to go visit Lord Puddle? Oh, um, you uh, you could have done it. Yeah, yes, you could have done it in the evening that you met Patree, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So it would have just been to sort of see if he knew anything else other than the the general whispers that are in the report that we were given. Um, like, because mm-hmm. obviously he's got the whole kids network and everything. So. Yeah, and you know you um, you suspect that actually. After all that time, it it might have actually been Lord Puddle, and them sort of convincing, you know, maybe some of these kids to actually, you know, come forward and kind of give more details because there seemed to be a few kids that were like talking about this Auntie Ethel. But um, Lord Puddle, um, let me see. Yeah, he. Um, he wasn't sure he he couldn't find anything, you know, because he would have been trying to to locate this person. Uh, but he is, you know, pretty sure this isn't. It's it's not like it's some kind of a monster or something. The the um, the place where they tracked it down is supposedly haunted, you know. But it's it's probably not. You know, he doesn't think that it's just. You know, it's not just some. It's not just some woman that you know that she wouldn't have evaded, you know, detection. And a lot of the stories that the children were telling about, you know, she would be there one minute and she and disappear, disappear the next. She'd be gone. Um, they say that Auntie Ethel can float, you know, um, and that she, you know, one of the kids kind of got close to her, but then. Um, something sort of scared her off and she had this strange smell that uh, reminded him of he used to work in his uncle's butcher shop and uh, there was a one really hot summer's day and a lot of the meat had been left out to spoil and there was this kind of smell coming off of Auntie Ethel Um, so yeah he he thinks it's some kind of a monster Um, but he's not obviously entirely sure. He, yeah, that's basically all that he knows. Um, but he thinks that unfortunately, I mean, the children, they haven't been seen. I mean, it seems to be, you know, fairly regular, like almost every fortnight, you know, a child, a new child would go missing, but nothing has turned up. Like there's no, there's no sight of uh, the child being released. There's no remains or anything that anyone has found. He he can't find any sight of the children. You know, after they've disappeared, they seem to have just like vanished. Um, but that's all. Oh, so, I'll have, have shared this with our with a cop who knows an informant and finds out extra information and shit. <laughs> You're all crooked cops. Everyone except Boyd. <laughs> I mean, Lord Puddle is very specific to the fact that he's like a Finnegan runner of the children's network of little yeah. spies type thing and pickpockets. So there's a there's a really good reason why this particular time she would have done this. And yeah. I suppose as we're making our way where we've been sent, she'll kind of share this with the group. Um, everything that um, Ben just said, <laughs> basically. Um. So, yeah, so, I mean, outside this uh, theatre, as I say, it's lopsided, there's two large, um, uh, I forgot to add, uh, there's, I'll put you onto the map in a second, but uh, I didn't, I forgot the um, exterior. Uh, I decided to use the map because it was actually, uh, we'll jump on it there in a minute, and it was a, a very good one done by Penny Dragon's own Peter Hunter, which I really liked, so I wanted to use it, but it was just an interior map, so apologies, I don't have... Uh, a visual for the outside, but uh, it's about, um, uh, you know, it's about 
it's like 40 foot wide and it goes um i think 60 you know, two, three, four, five, six, uh, yeah it goes about 60 feet uh back you know um it's two story um and you can see um like on the f- on the front the facade the, the two double doors are locked or not locked but shut um pretty tightly from the outside there's no like padlock or anything on the front you can see and there is a boarded up window on the on the right and uh looks like an uh a sort of a loose window it doesn't have boards across it um on the left that's what you can see anyway from the front like facade of the building is is it a, is it a um... Is it a detached building? Like, could I do a circuit? It's detached, yeah. It's detached, yeah. Yeah. So I'll I'll do a um a walk around the outside to see if there's any other entryways or whatever. I just say, uh, well, I'll I'll keep a look on the ceiling. If this king can float, I bet he'll be up there because I'll expect no one to look up there. But I'll be looking up there. Just don't look up for skirts. Maybe I'll keep my eyes down for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, Andy, give me a give me a perception check. Oh, I've still got the dis, dis, disadvantage toggle on. So 21. Uh oh, yeah. So you can see um <clears throat> sorry. Uh Oh, sorry, I gotta turn that on. Uh, bollocks. Uh, yeah, so as you go around, there's a lot more of these kind of boarded up windows um, that you can see. But then, uh, with the exception of on the eastern face of the building, uh, there is a, um, there is, a, what you call it? Um, there is another um, unbarricaded window about halfway along the right hand side of the building but uh, there is no uh, there is a back door um that you can see but um it looks like uh it doesn't um like it's been sort of like sealed shut or like oh sorry not a back door like there was a back door but you know like um you can see an outline in sort of slightly different colored bricks you know oh, like so there like was a door up. and they like bricked it up So the the window that's kind of loose on the eastern side and the window that's loose at the front are they like ground level windows or they are on the the second story the one uh, on the front is about 15 foot up but because the building is sinking on the right hand side the window around the other side is only about 10 feet up because the building is lopsided and waterlogged I, I'm not going to do anything with the windows on my own, so I'm going to go back around to the group and share what I've discovered. Basically, that there's one more window about 10 foot up, uh, but everything else looks pretty sealed up. Interesting. That's what we call character growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the creepy haunted house isn't going to have a cool load of shit in it, or unless it's being like deliberately haunted so that people don't go there, in which case, when we all bust in, I can rob that stuff then. Wait, know? wait, wait. Can we do it again? Can I do it again? Can I, can I boot in the front door? Down all the freeze? <laughs> Is it all right? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, maybe, I mean we, we know you like kicking the door down. Should, should we take a wee peek in the window? What can I use my servant for apart from in battle? Can he like? Can I see through it, or does it? You can't, is it just like as weird? Oops, oh, sorry. Ignore that. So you can't, uh, as far as I'm aware, um, see through him. Um, but let me just double check. Uh, is he like a, fa- a familiar, like fine familiar? Or I'll, I'll bring him no. out. So he's gonna be a little vile with wings. Like a little. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Actually, I should, I should have kept his uh, his regular um portrait then. 
I kind of went from. I, tried to I think from like I don't know. I like that. Oh no, that it doesn't matter. Right? Uh... I've, I've got a little. Um, yeah, we've got a little. Uh, I'll make him a, a token. I've got exactly the right one <laughs> for that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'll change that for the next session. I'm sure but, I could um, try and melt the lock with one of my one of my uh, vials. Oh, you have. Um, yeah, because there's no visit. You've got um, uh, the the alchemy jug, right? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, that's the other thing I meant to say. Um, so say and for the this right mission, tool for the we'll job. Do... We have an hour. I can make a. Yeah. So actually, open the door. that sounds mm -hmm. good. You've got. Um... I don't have a crowbar, Daniel. Crowbar, but you could kick it down. Oh, two seconds. Uh, Nico, down. will you will you roll me um, a d6? Because we can assume that you had a long rest and you've got your experimental elixir. Every long mm -hmm. rest, you brew one, and it's random. What it, which what effect it is? It's random. Five. Five. Okay. So. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hang on, does it say you when triggered when someone drinks it on the experimental elixir table? Yeah. So number eight. So it's five flight. is flight. The drinker gains a flying speed of ten feet for ten minutes. That's cool. We can just Perfect. walk in the window. So you've got a little mini flying. flying potion. So I'll keep so I'll keep I, I, my experimental elixirs in my servant in my flying vial. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize that um as well that you can actually when you when you do it um um hang on Oh that's cool. I didn't realize you can actually create an experimental elixir as an action by expending a, a first level spell slot. And then if you do that, you get to choose which one you want. So that's cool. Okay. You get one random one per day, and then you can make more, which is cool. All right. I didn't know that. Um, I mean, and all then, of them is a healing potion. Yeah, and the other thing is you'll have to decide which two infusions you've kind of taken with you on the mission. So the alchemy jug, the bag of holding, um, or the one of the was it defense and the the arcane focus? I'll bring my alchemy jug and bag of holding. Cool. So yeah. I, I I look at Andy and say, uh, maybe, maybe we should keep it quiet this one for the moment. Maybe get the surprise on them. Who who hears the most nimble? I'll I'll bring out my vial of uh, of flying potion and say, does anyone feel like just popping in the window? I'm just gonna like point it at Andy. Like I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna look, like the minute you say number, I just point it at her. I'll I'll go in the window, but what's that for? Oh, were you flying already? What were you? Oh, no. I I just climb stuff. Oh, you just climbed. Yeah, no, it's flying. This will this will help you fly. <laughs> Ten feet high. Hold on, Andy. Don't don't drink the strange thing the stranger gives you. Oh, drink, the strange thing. drink the strange thing Andy drink it mm. Andy's going to go ahead and just climb up try to climb up to have a look in the window yeah uh, with, with, after one more suspicious look at the vial like it's following you with its wings it's, it's going up the side next to you this little vial of green potion just in case don't fall a little, a little uh, I'm going to guess though does it make any noise like presumably, its wings make a little kind of hum, like a snitch, maybe. A little hum, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, I th it can, like, if if you want it to, I I think you decided it doesn't, but like as per the stat block, it can speak if you want it to. It's it has like you can make one that can speak, okay. um, so, but it, otherwise it, it understands you and you you can't see through its eyes like find familiar. But I mean, you can take full like control of it and obviously you can talk to it. And I'm going to say that even if it doesn't speak out loud, you and Watson can communicate so that it, he can relay to you anything that he's seen. Okay. And also, if you have a, 
uh, if you have a spell that's got a, like a range of touch, um, like I think you have cure wounds and yeah, you, you can inf- use it and, in, for... and inflict wounds, then he can deliver the, the, the touch spell as if you know you channel it through him. Um, I, I assume acrobatics for Andy to climb. Mm, athletics to climb. Athletics. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um, as I'm climbing, Go though, roll, if, baby. if this Let's thing is, is hovering along beside me, I wouldn't be surprised if Ember's head pops out, like, sort of, as I'm climbing up, Ember's looking over my shoulder at this thing mm, and considering definitely. taking a swipe. Um, but let's see if I embarrass myself <laughs> totally while I'm climbing here. Oh, Jesus. 11 for climbing. Um, And which one? Is this the window at the front? This is the window at the front, so that's... 15 yeah. feet up yeah so you you get um like almost the top you get most of the way you get about 11 feet up and then <laughs> you uh slip on something and you fall you take one point of damage just you like hit your elbow and in a weird way and you hear a little pop and uh yeah you just you take a point of bludgeoning damage girl has a, a notebook out he's just scribbling into it uh, and like taking notes fascinated on this thing yeah <laughs> little floating potion he's like um, more, more than beer once Andy gets up and, and dusts herself off she'll probably still throw a look at the hovering thing um, and then unless somebody else wants to do something she's going to make another attempt to climb up to the window well uh, open uh, to somebody else doing girl, something girl like cracks his- maybe I could help you with that and he starts jankily and loudly taking out a climber's kit from his backpack <laughs> you see the thing is with climbing you have to use the pitons and they are pronounced pitons not pitons like everyone thinks is that really is that true <laughs> yeah yeah no that is true yeah 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 <laughs> and, uh, every day. Just, they're, they're, they're not exactly stealthy though climbing. Daryl they're kind of loud yeah well, shit. Nice. You do make a good point. Maybe, maybe I could just jump up there, and he just <laughs> takes a run and jump at it. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, you're just taking a run and jump. Give me athletics, yeah. Sure. Um, with a run and start, I think I can. What's my strength score? It's eighteen. And yeah. Yeah. From a run and start, I can only reach like seven feet off the ground. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but give me, give me uh, that. You know, that's getting you halfway there. So if you give me an athletics check, that you know, if you there's no noise from jump and grab something. You can just imagine Mm -hmm. Uh, though. Give me me a perception check, Petri. The noise. Uh, But Dora is like a jungle cat. He makes no noise. More like a jungle warthog. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hey, he's like a, he's a little, he's like a stout, muscle bound dwarf. Love uh, it. Yeah, so you give me a uh, perception of the tree. And... Sorry, I clicked on the wrong. Oh, no, it's good. Yes. Um, uh, you, can't, you can't hear anything. Really, you hear something, uh, but then like a little scuffling, and you listen, and then. You notice that, that a rat kind of scurries like away from some shrubs outside the building. But other than that, it seems pretty pretty still inside. Petrie's um, tempted as, just to, as, to knock on the door. Yeah. As Petrie is, is thinking that, um, Doral, you leap and you kind of manage to like uh, grab a, a sort of a loose, not, not a, a wobbly brick, but it's like a brick that's kind of protruding from oh it's not a brick sorry um because it's wood like a little plank. um a plank that's been uh it's kind of pressed out a bit but it holds and you you grab on and then you manage to pull up uh, you know reach up to the windowsill and pull yourself up and uh the the windows uh you know they're not they're, they're kind of pushed to you know closed to but not like tightly so you looks like you could just kind of push one of the one of the doors of the window uh, aside right uh and open it yeah i'm, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna listen first i hear them 
Uh, give me a perception check. Sure. Fourteen. Uh, uh, so, um, like dead ahead, like you see into this old um, theater. There's, you know, rafters um, all along the top. Um, it looks like where some things would have been held. You know, there's rigging and everything up in the, you know, in the canopy. Uh, but it's just littered with old like scenery and crates that's all molded and rotten wood. Um, about half of, you know, the, like the right hand side where it's tilted down is flooded with this brackish kind of, you know, green algae choked water. And you see this the stage ahead and you can kind of make out through the tatters of red curtains, uh, like a little prop throne you know, and some other debris on the stage, and it looks like there's stuff kind of behind the curtains. Um, and then, very strangely, there is a, on the left-hand side of the room, um, kind of behind some crates and barrels, there is a, like a massive bed. It's kind of ramshackle. It looks kind of, uh, looks like it could be a prop. You know, it's kind of roughly nailed together and kind of crooked. It's like this big, almost cartoonishly large bed would look like it would fit someone that's like you know 15 foot tall and 10 foot wide Weird. and dead ahead you, you think you saw like a shadow move somewhere in the darkness because it's it's otherwise it's like it's pretty it's dimly lit in there you know because it's there's light coming in through the uh, a little bit through the, the the grimed up windows and a hole <laughs> in the roof as I like look through, my main attention is to try and look at the other window. Can I see it? The one on the east side of the building? Oh yeah, you can. Sorry. Um, um, yeah, it looks much the same. You know, as this one, it looks like you'd be able to just get in. Um, but it is directly over. Like here, you'd land. You know, about fifteen foot down onto the wooden floor. Yeah. Um, you would land in the water. Now it doesn't look like the water's that deep but you can't it's difficult you can't see it's kind of dim in here so there's a chance that you know there's a big hole but uh, either way you'd be landing in in about f like four three or four feet of water um two or three feet at least i i, I climbed back down and i explained the other that's a big difference for Dural. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh um also uh it looks like the door you glance. The reason there's no lock on the outside, there is a, it looks just like wood, um, but there is a bar um, going across the interior of the door. Okay. Um, I, I hop down and it's go hefty back enough. to everyone else and I say uh, typical theatre shit inside, you know, canopies, rigging, a stage, some sort of cartoonishly large bed and... Uh, a throne on the stage, but I did notice the window on the east side of the building has water at the drop of it. Um, I think back, was there some sort of platform I could stand on at this window? Like, how was I just holding onto the edge and peeking in, sort of thing? I wasn't, yeah, I assume you were kind of like you know, maybe had a, a foot on a like one foot on a little foothold somewhere, and otherwise, you were kind of just you know, kind of pulling yourself in. My thought for yeah. entry is some sort of like bunch of us hopping in that window over there landed in the water hoping it's deep enough to break our fall maybe andy or someone who's particularly long range staying at this window pinging stuff down and as i mentioned the the door seems to be barred it's going to be hard to get in that way i have a rope if, if we could climb down and not go at the water yeah no that's that's a bloody good idea well we can climb down <laughs> I imagine the like. Is it like a? Is it? I, I'm yeah. guessing it's not clean water. No, it looked. Like how, how thick is the bar on the door? Um, about that. You know, not quite a foot, but you know, maybe like um, 
Yeah. Do I think I can move it with Mage Hand? Well, yeah, probably. It's, it's what is it? Pounds, mate. It really. Thirty pounds. How many pounds? Thirty. Holy Christ! Yeah, you you might. Yeah, yeah, you you might be able to. Yeah. That'd be the best way. To Sorry, get. ten pounds. Yeah. Ten pounds. Yeah. If, if uh, we could. Probably if we could. not. No. Which is a no. A couple of. Yeah. <laughs> I think this thing's heavier than Patrice. <laughs> Patrice yeah, but I, I don't want to lift it and like move it off. I just want to. Do you think Dr if I can lift ten pounds, could back. I just push it out of one of the brackets? Because I'm assuming uh, well, it's just a bar resting on two mm, brackets. It's in like, you know, like it's like little ring. But well, because I suppose it's like with the rules, like push, lift, and drag. Are kind of the, you know. Uh, that's all determined by in the one thing because you know people like creatures that have like powerful build have they count as large but i mean i would push say and lift, i think a different sorry push and drag are different to lift i thought you can push a lift. lot more than you can drag or lift Sorry, I you can lift a lot more than i would say give it a go and give me just like a um an ability check with your spell casting ability wait 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 hold on is that gonna be loud how about we just sneak in through the window? Uh, it might be loud. Uh, uh, well, could could Petri? Can your little flying thing do anything? I mean, I can just put a rope up here, and we can all. I was gonna say while you guys are doing this, I feel like Petri is just probably gonna try and pick the lock on the door. <laughs> so it's not a lock; it's a bar. Either that, or just ah, uh, um. Yeah, I've got something here. How long are you, how long would you guys say you guys are doing it? Can I just sit down and hunker down in the corner and start making a tool? It takes an hour. How patient are you guys? Right tool for the job. We're, we're traditionally not the most patient of people. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, I know Patri did mention uh, pouring acid on a lock. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that might work on the bar. I'll try it. Um, can I cast acid splash on it, or do I? Can, do well, didn't I have you have to? One? Hang on, I think the alchemy jug can make. Oh, acid. I get to pick. I get to pick, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. It can um, I will. Like a certain number of uh, eight ounces of acid. Calm Unless you guys it. want to lube this up with mayo or oil. <laughs> yeah if you dump or like if you eight ounces you could kind of i feel like you could douse most of the length of the bar and it would it would eat away most of it it might take you know like a couple of minutes to eat through it but not too much not too much time all right i'm i'm gonna you know swinging like with a giant bowling ball I'm like, all right you guys one of you catch and i'll toss you the jug because i ain't climbing up there Oh, I, I'm well, staying Watson in front of the door. Probably... I'm just gonna like look through the crack in the like, door. And... What Watson can? Um, I mean, I think. Let me see. Actually, this is. I want to double check. Can Watson? Like, I assume he can. Can we make him hold a lot more than he looks like? I'll have the whole jug of acid in him. Um... He can be like. Can he be like the flask of holding? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna say maybe just for something like this, if he's gonna be like, you know, okay, he's got no arms, but I, I would say maybe you can fill you can fill him with the acid, or like if you have an experimental elixir or a potion, I'm gonna say you can you can fill Watson up with any kind of potion or liquid. Sure. Um, and okay, maybe well, I'll, as that I'll would fill be him if, with if the he acid. doesn't have arms. Yeah, if he doesn't have arms to manipulate things then i'll give him that that power to be used as as any kind of potion yes yeah, so you can, like fly in there and like pee on the yeah. bar i'll do that yeah. all right <laughs> watch like... your fingers <sighs> yeah as, he, as i wiggle my fingers and they're all like nubbins and kind of burnt and a little scaly from <laughs> it's like somewhere right, guys <laughs> Step somewhere aside. you hear Somewhere you start hearing. I'll, I'll just have him dump it. 
Yeah, dump it on the window. Yeah, he's just like, mm. <laughs> like he does a flyby, <laughs> and just and you hear this. You do hear a mild hissing. Um, you know, you start hearing this bubbling sound from behind the door. It's not. It's not like super loud. It's a soft kind of. Can I just like push the door a little bit, just enough that I can see through a crack in it, and then I will conjure Mage Hand on the other side. Um, yeah, I mean, like immediately after it starts to hiss. Yeah. Okay, like, I'd say even... I, I know, like with those doors, they usually have a little bit of give before they catch, you know, enough that you can kind of just yeah. see a little. I just want enough of a crack that I can see the other side and create mage hand on the other side sure you can do that yeah and you can um you know when you get close enough to kind of peer in so you can see um there is a smell of like it's just it's the smell of like very uh very badly rotten wood and there's also this kind of you know like sort of a smell of like kind of sour sap coming from you know as this this concoction is melting it's it's eating through the wood pretty fucking quickly um <laughs> so even as you like push a little bit it starts to like have a little bit of give and you can see it bowing and kind of cracking in the center as its structural integrity is eaten away um, i'm and, just gonna have a mage and... hand like just with one finger just like start to push in push on it and see if it'll just like give before we rush in, I forgot about the part about the moving shadows. Watch out for giant monsters called Anti Ethel. Like, I'm I'm gonna try and, and like, climb to the window oh, again, and and I'll 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 you know, what's cover? I'll give cover with my arrows. Yeah, so I would say it'll be like drawing a bow, like holding yourself up on the windowsill and drawing the bow. I'll I'll let you do it, but you will be you'll attack at disadvantage if you're kind of not sit into the window though. Oh like yeah, you could straddle yeah. the window kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's I, I'll yeah. If you're sitting up on it, that's yeah. Andy would be able to do that. As you push pouches, you push your, the mage hand in. Um, it's kind of uh, you know, you, there's there's a very subtle um, sensation because it's like when you when the mage hand manipulates things, you can't fully experience like whatever you know sensory uh information it's giving you but you, you know you get a little bit a very very dull sense uh and it's like it, it's like consistency of like fudge like put if you put your finger through fudge <laughs> that's what this kind of half melted wood is like starting to to I just want to see like, if i can't like just like just put enough force that it just snaps eventually you can just yeah bore the mage hand finger like through and it kind of eventually makes a full like and a I'm hole just gonna the center, and then that Dural, you're up. It's snap. kicking time. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna like step aside and like let Dural just kick what's left of the door apart. <laughs> it's uh, kick I, wood. I'll do oh. the athletics again to see if I can get up to the window to take Yay. position. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I sort of. I, I eagerly await with a foot lifted, looking up at Andy, waiting for her to give me the nod. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing an Andy, like see, having seen Dural do what he did. Um, you know, you, you kind of now know you just like, you jump and kick off like a little barrel and then you like land on the little foothold and whoop, spring yourself up, pull up. Um, and you're now kind of like sitting in, in the window and, and bracing. And I think Dora, if you're kicking the door down, what I'm going to do is move, um, uh, I will move you guys onto the interior map you guys see uh, andy i've put you up there on the window um you can uh if you want hang on i'll move actually move petri and, and andy kind of or petri and um pouches off to where you're standing isn't isn't in the building yet but doral if you're kicking the door you would be on these two you know those two squares uh, in the building so yeah that's you see this uh, this old theater uh, oh and actually technically this would prop I mean this little bit would probably be I uh, know actually that's not hidden because um, 
you realistically would have you would have seen that from a height. So yeah, this is this is kind of pretty much what you can see uh, I, I, most I, of it. I sort of like put my foot back down gingerly and look at the others. I've had a sudden thought. What if this monster has some sort of child uh, uh, as a hostage? I don't want to get them killed. Let's try and do this uh, sneaky beaky like. I think it might be a bit late for that. I mean, we haven't made much. Also, if, if they've got a child, I think the child was going to, if we don't kill said monster, child's going to, from what the sounds of things, end up as lunch. Yeah. Well, well, what, do we know so any creatures that feed off of a child? Are there any yeah. creatures that feed off of a human every whatever period they've been disappearing? Give. Um... Give me. Um, Look at Nico trying to actually just give solve me an it. Intelligence check <laughs> instead of just charging blindly like we normally do. What, his, history. Give me. Give, give me history <laughs> check. Sorry. History. I was going to say because Peach is going to be clever with how he does stuff because he's not strong and he's not wise. So he's got to be very clever. Um, history. I don't know why I have so much trouble finding. I mean, they're in alphabetical order. There we go. Ten. Um, it's difficult. It could be a lot of things. I mean, it's pre- it's a pretty common kind of, you know, boogeyman kind of thing. You know that like, oh, you know, and it'll it'll eat your you know children will eat your bones, and you know it'll come for you if you don't eat your vegetables, or you know if you misbehave, then you know something will come and snatch you in the night. Um, you know, um, hags, bogans, bodax, you know. Gremlins. Um, uh, you guys, should I um, should I send in should I send Watson okay. in to see if there's any little children hidden in the corners before we go storm the place? Little circle Watson. Send little Watson in. Watson's over here. He's got nine hit points. Oh, there's a map. My character sheet is blocking. How loud was Doral kicking that door in? Because I mean, at yeah, this no, point... I, I haven't. I, I I just say let let's go in quiet. Oh, okay. I, I thought you kicked the door in already. Eventually, like the I mean, unless yeah, somebody just wants to the... handle the acid bar, I mean, it, it will eventually Sunk down. split and probably. But at that point, it's going to split in the middle, so it should still remain mostly resting on the bars, and you could probably push the doors open. Uh, I'll say okay. Just maybe push the door gently open. All right. And then let's all sneak yeah. around and see if we can't find out what's going on. Yeah. Do I see so anything you moving can, in you there? Should or be able. To... Um, give me a perception check. You, you can. You should be. Are you able to move, uh, Watson, Nico? Yeah, I can't I move myself, oh. but I can move Watson. Oh, did I not? Um. Give... He's got oh. 30 feet movement. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I thought because I picked him as your token, um, you should be able to move him now. And... No. Hang on. Um, I know. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of... Um, I tried to like give him the this like so you could see the stat block but i'll let's try and give you that separately i don't know you should be able to move both of them i can now. move them now yeah i have them okay so yeah you i'm gonna say actually just since uh we're about um since we're about at that halfway mark um oh no actually well Hmm. Yeah, we're about we're about at that halfway mark. So, I think now that we've we've gotten into the old theater, before we plunge in, I think that's maybe as good a time as any to take a, a little ten minute intermission. Cool. Sounds think, good. Guys? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, right, uh, everyone, tune in. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in so far. And we're just going to take a quick ten minute break, and we'll be right back. So stay tuned, and let's see if uh, they all get eaten. See you soon. <laughs> oh, 
Hey, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you for being patient. I was late, as always, coming back from intermission. <laughs> so, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump back into the cloaks. Um, just uh, yeah, I'm just gonna really quickly uh, just add something to uh, to Boyd's sheet. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll I'll do that, um, Boyd, because. So you have 41 hit points, which is that from level four? I'm just wondering if you need to yeah, that's have right. more hit points. Yeah, but that should be. That sounds like sounds yeah. about right. Cool. Uh, skill expert, right. Uh, uh, so I think you can just... Uh, on roll 20, I'm pretty sure there's basically a toggle for advantage. So I think I'll... Um, yeah, I think I'm going to drop that. Um God damn it. Uh, 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 uh. Um, one second. Expertise. Oh, you're taking it for athletics, right? For the grapple? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And plus one strength. So 18 strength here? Yeah. yeah. You're at 17 right now, right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Um, um, I just looked. Up. Okay. That should. My uh, my hit dice is a D8, so that seems like it's correct. Yeah, 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 that's cool. So it should be sorted out. Sorry, that was um. Thank you, folks. Uh, forgot to um, just Doral took the skill expert feat uh from the last session, the last level up, and we're just adding it to the sheet. So he's expertise on athletics for his grapples, which he uh, likes to do. So you have uh, yeah, you gained access to this creepy flooded theater. Um. And yeah, what would you like to do? Andy's up in the window. <laughs> um, I guess we sneak in. What do you think? Creep up, sneaky beaky to the north. See what we can do. I mean, something moved in here earlier. I didn't catch it, but yeah. maybe we'll catch it now. I didn't see anything moving, obviously, or anything, did I? No, so I was just going to say with your position, you, it's, there's a few like, there's a few creeks and, you know, sort of that like house settling kind of noises, some drips. But then, um, like from behind here, from back here, like behind this, this direction, it sounds like, like a kind of a, a creak or a it's the sound of someone um rolling over in a in a bed it's that kind of like kind of sound and then it stopped sorry where was it from i didn't have to, i had the map zoomed in too much uh from basically the the up here the like the top left the back left of the building somewhere up behind the stage cool it's kind of kind of general direction. Um, and I I try and like sneak up to this crate and sort of use it as cover. See if I can see anything extra. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you're moving up there. Would you like yeah. some sort of stealth check or something? Um. Well, I mean, uh, you you're sneaking you're sneaking up to it. I assume, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Call me stealth. Anyone who's choosing to like move stealthily, then just give me. Oh, a... Never mind. Never mind. Oh, um, you you trip and just you, like you just hear Doral go like he trips and like like cracks his head like off the corner. You just hear like a ah like this fuck <laughs> as he just clatters his his head off to. There's something off the, you like you like bite so down and then just goes fuck it. Freeze! It's the brown cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> so I had had an arrow kind of and I was tracking Durrell like you know mm. with it when he when he did this spectacular face plant and I think what it, you know that thing where like, you have the arrow ready and then you kind of let it kind of go soft again because you're just like oh for fuck's sake before pulling it up again to kind of survey the place again it's just like okay <laughs> yeah 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 oh, yeah the uh as you as you do that, um, Doral is like you know freeze the brown cloaks, and then like Watson 
It's like little wings. He's like, <laughs> like he's getting around. <laughs> Folds his little wings. He's scoping like, it out. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, these for... two little bubbles float up, like almost like sunglasses. <laughs> like, like, I like to imagine he's got two little like googly eye bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles within bubbles, <laughs> <laughs> like in his little vial. If he wants to display emotion, and then they just disappear again. Um, yeah. But there's a... You just... You hear... Nothing sprints at me from the darkness, then? Nope. Hmm. Look at everyone else. And sort of head around this way. Mm. And try and yeah. get a good look in the bed. Is there any anyone in the bed? Um, give me a perception check. So we're all just letting Daryl go. Aren't we? <laughs> I'm just gonna like step into the doorway and like look around. Yeah, you can you can give me a perception check as well. Uh, from like here, um, like just so you you see uh. Just like a little bit of like, you know, dust or grit or something like falls off from up above. And there's a very slight. Mm. 22, Ben. 22. Natural 22. 20. Oh, yeah. Um, up there, there's like, you see more, like, you see the dust at the same time. As Doral, you hear that that kind of groan and very subtle, like sound of sounds like bare feet, like like shifting, like creaking, and like something kind of moves, like a little tatter of of curtain and a bit of rigging. You see it like like wobble and something like you know pushing it, like kind of pressing down on it. There is you're almost certain there is something you can like. So and then you just kind of behind get a the curtain, you smell. There is something no up in the rafters. On the raft, up, here. Uh, up on the rigging, you can you can see there's something you can't see it, but you feel something is there. You feel something, and it is just. So it's it's what, not a question of I can't it. see it. It's a question of it's invisible. You, you would assume there's something there, but you cannot see it. Okay, there's no. Nothing, what I mean there's is nothing like, visually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not like. Behind a curtain or behind a rafter. It's, no, you're looking. There's at empty, empty space, but I'm sure space. there's something there. There's something there. There's drifting. The rafter is bowed ever so slightly, like so there's something on it. I'm 15 um, feet up, so that would be kind of level. I I assume there's nothing I can see. No, I was empty kind space. of nat nat 20 was like mm. yeah, it's you know. I'd like to yeah. make an attack then. Um, yeah, sure. Still, um, obviously, disadvantage because invisible. I just want to hold on. I just want to check my distance. Am I in the right area there by measuring to that point? Uh, y- yes, it would. Yeah, it would be this, these, um, like this area. Yeah, before the curtain. So, yeah, but okay. you would. I just want yeah, to check anywhere, spell range. And anywhere in that, yeah, you're, it, it is what you're aiming for is within, I'm just going to assume it's 60 feet. Yeah. Uh, it's, so it's meant to roll an actual attack. I don't know why it didn't. Um, oh yeah. I'm yeah. Just, gonna um, roll... just give me t- Yeah, and you can give me the whatever d t d twenty plus. I need just go. Um, so it would be ten seventeen to hit on the lower roll. Yeah. Oh, actually, sorry, guys. Just give me one second. Uh, 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 uh. Forgot to uh, pull it up. So what is it? Uh, Ten plus uh, what? Seventeen? Did you say? Yeah. Cool. Where is this going? Sorry, guys. Um. Yeah. So that is. Actually, be yeah. So. Uh. What you call it? Um, Pouches is like looking and he sees something 
you know, feel something and just instinctively like this little twist, you know, and fires out this, uh, oh no, it's ice. So just like appears in his hand and shoots out. You see this, this blade, this sort of Chris knife made of ice, just sort of circling through the air and it sticks halfway into just the empty air, but it, like the blade disappears as if it's sunk into something. And then you hear like a hiss and like a hiss. And then you see frost kind of like spread over a little bit of something. And for a split second, there's an almost predator outline of like half of a hulking creature, large creature up on the rafters. And then the knife explodes. And uh, I think does it... Okay, yeah, just it make a dig make... saving throw. I was gonna say I wasn't sure if the ta- if the the target automatically failed the the decks, um, but it did anyway. It failed so fourteen um, points, of, fifteen points nine, of damage total. Nine, nine piercing, piercing, six cold. Nine piercing, six cold. Yeah. So, uh, no, give me one second. Um, nine piercing and six cold is twenty. Uh, is it, oh, come on, guys. Put it in. Uh, so, with that, I am going to need everyone to roll initiative. Uh, mm-hmm. As this Andy thing was, is... was just starting to call down to Pages. Why are you attacking the. Oh, holy shit. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this. Uh, we have to click on our token before initiative. You have to it? click yeah. on the token. On the token. And come on! Oh god! Come on, roll twenty! Don't do this to me. Seven. Woo! Which is one better than Dural. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <sighs> Uh, yeah. And at the top, of course. Of course. Um, yeah, so that's... Um, I just let me rearrange it in descending order. So yeah, Andy, um, you're up. <clears throat> Is it still visible? Uh, no, it, it like, ex- exploded. And then I'm gonna shoot an arrow. You have a general idea of, of where it where is. it was before. Yeah. Um. So is that because I'm I'm aiming at the spot it was before? Is that just normal or disadvantage? Um, it's disadvantage. You still can't see it. Cool. Uh, yeah. Holy crap! That's not gonna hit. That's an eight to hit. Um, no, unfortunately, this is just the arrow. You see, like, you hear another hiss, and then it just it goes through um, a bit of curtain behind whatever it is, and just rips through, and you hear it slam into a far wall. Um, okay. Um, Andy's going to stick where she is. Okay. Um, so next up is Patri. Now, um, Watson... The way Watson works is he has his own turn he takes right after you. He like he he takes his turn right after yours in the initiative. And unless you use a bonus action to like get him to do one of his like attacks or one of his things, um he'll, he he can only dodge. But if you use a bonus action on your turn, he can then do his little pew okay. pew attack. Thank you. Um, well, I want to make sure that there's no kids or anything hiding in the shadows where we're attacking. Um, cool. Can I send I'm actually Watson say, through? Or yeah, what's you guys, the... you guys, yeah, you guys would have been. Well, yeah, he he will have his turn like right after yours, so mm. you can do what you want to do and then assume that you know. Or or if you want, I'll I'm happy to let you swap you and Watson so that Watson well, I was going to say, can first. I ready a spell? Can I ready a spell and then on the mm-hmm. condition that you can, yeah. If but if you can, I'll cast it. Yeah, but if, if you want, I'll let you take Watson's turn first if you want to send him to like 
scout, you know, because that's yeah. in case that's going to, you know, affect what you want to do. Yeah, because he wants to spew a bunch of burning shit, but he doesn't want to turn a little innocent child into himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... What so he has a 30-foot fly speed, but... That's it, 30. I guess I can make he'll dash. Can I still make him do a, a dash uh, and then report pen? Then I can... How does that yeah. work? Him, him, um, like him taking a dash will require your bonus action, so that will be gone from your turn. The only action he can take, um, apart from, um, a dodge, like he can only dodge unless you use a bonus action to make him, you know, like use another action, like help right. or use his force strike his little okay well i just want to use him to scope it out before i yep. send an attack so i guess i'll make him do the uh, double move on his turn that's a bonus uh -huh. action yeah where's he gone oh well wow. <laughs> he can go one more but that's he'll be around yeah. there scoping mm -hmm. yeah he is he's scoping um so he's gone yeah he's flown right up um when he he flies up there obviously where this thing um or where it was you know he kind of like beep, like knocks you know like into this thing he can kind of like mm -hmm. you know he can't see it but he can he can sense it you know around him um he's kind of like and it's kind of like ah, you know can feel the wind kind of going past him as it's clearly swatting at him but um yeah well, that's watson so um a tree does he doesn't he doesn't see mm. any kids or... um no he doesn't he doesn't Fence. see any um it would be like a to do a thorough search would be an action it would take, take the search action but he can't I'm see not that like, concerned. yeah there's nobody <laughs> like it. and also since he was um you know, since he's up there, you, know, you can see all along here, and you don't see. There's no kids that you can see. You know, unless they're like well hidden. You know, there's there's nobody nobody else visible. How far can I move? Oh, I can move one more, and then I wanna. Can I cast Tasha's Caustic Brew in that direction? Uh, you can. Line? Can I tell yep. where? The direction that sound is coming from um yeah you can you know everyone's been kind of focusing fire you know on there so so i think i make a deck save right so no. i want to cast do i have level two no not no. yet oh, um 13. no you should it's uh, the same no, level as just... us no they just have um level one i always forget art artificers only get up to fifth level spells Kind of like a wheeler, a half caster, which I was surprised. So five acid damage, and if um, Dex throws Dex save. Yeah. So um, ba -ba -ba -ba. he actually. Um, oh. oh no, he. Yeah, it, it uh, he fails uh, or it fails. Uh, so okay. you see, what is it? Uh, five, and then. And then at the beginning of each of its turns. Unless it takes an action to yeah. scrape it off or I'll get the acid off. Yeah, so um, Patri, like seeing and, and Watson is like phew, kind of flitting about like a little snitch kind of, you know, it's like he's like flying and then stopping every so often and he's like flapping his wings and like, bing, 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 you know, like. I feel like he's kind of, like, with his wings, he's like kind of, you know, pushing the stuff he's in the He's doing direction. like air traffic control, you know, he's like, you know. Like, um, uh, and then he, uh, yeah, you kind of get the impression he doesn't like he flaps the wings, but like he kind of just could actually hover if he wanted to. He, yeah. You know, he kind of like doesn't. It's he, can he can, you know, gesture with the wings um, when he when he's floating. Um, and yeah, uh, Petri is like quickly, you know, you pull like a, a like a vial with this green powder in it, and then you see him like like like. He, pop something and a little kind of looks like a little chip of you know um 
uh, like chalk, some kind of chalky little rock, like flicks it up and then catches it in the tube, and then all this this uh, these, this powder starts to like foam, and then like a, like the Mentos challenge, you know, it just like fires the uh, the vial, and this spew of green, like vibrant green acid, just shoots forward, and you see like it splashes on something, you know, invisible. You see it coat, you see smoke, like rise into the air, and something like ah! like like howls and like ah! and you smell just this awful stench of burning flesh, um, and then you can see. Um, parts of something outlined in like where thick viscous acid is kind of continuing to just drip on it and making sort of almost a, a partial mold of this thing. Nice. Um, yeah, so that was movement and action and then it was a bonus action to to command Watson. So I think that's the tree. Uh, so Next up um, is Auntie Ethel. Uh, and Auntie Ethel hmm, is going to. Let me see. Um, oh, the wrong layer, sorry. Oh, God damn it. So. Because she's got like the acid coating on her now, we can see her. I'm gonna say, yeah, it's it's gonna be um, easier. Well, you're definitely gonna see her now because uh, sixty. Okay, sorry, bear with me, folks. Um trying to get is there a cone tool um on this can i draw a cone on roll 20 or am i gonna have to do this with my imagination i've always had to just draw lines uh, i think you can draw a circle yeah. i don't know that a cone is going to be a doer a line tool but that's yeah. as far as it goes that's fine a 60 foot cone i think is gonna get all of you um yeah, I think now Andy is 15 feet up. But I mean, try to think how wide it gets. Uh, you know. It's um, going to be at least 30 feet wide by that yeah, point. Yeah, but by, yeah, it, it, that's about at about 45 feet away. So uh, you hear, um, you just hear this like from the acid, like somewhere like in the in the middle of this like up near the rafters, you just hear <laughs> <laughs> and then uh it's like ah little one you want a snowball fight with Auntie Ethel, do you? <laughs> and then there is uh this blast of ice cold air as suddenly this hulking blue skinned like cracked boiled watered fanged scraggly white haired muscled hulking granny of a of a, of an ogre looking figure twists her gnarled clawed fingers and shoots uh, a cone of cold um in your direction <laughs> so everybody uh, give me a con save. Uh, DC, DC thirteen. Um, could I use my reaction to cast Earthen Morgue? Is the floor you underneath can. me made out of something suitably? Um, I think there's probably um, like if there are enough enough um or other foundation. Like, because the the floor is pretty like splintered, so you could probably pull some earth up from beneath. 
Oh, never mind. It only works on deck saving throws. This is calm, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, never mind. Um, no, it was a saving throw, wasn't it? It wasn't a check. Uh, it was um, saving throw, yeah. Saving throw. Add two to that. Um, cool. Oh, right, Ben, you've gone a little bit quiet. Really? Mm. Is that the same for everyone else? Yeah, it's a bit oh. quieter than before. Yeah. Good. Hang on. Had you switched to the microphone under the desk again? I don't know. Is that any better? About the same. Just check what your microphone is on your Zoom. Yeah. Um. Um. No, it's it's using the weird. It's using the um, the regular microphone, mm. like my this. That is weird because all the levels are the same. I don't yeah, know. It's a bit. That's a bit worrying. Uh, shit. I don't know. Is it very quiet? Not very quiet. Just maybe speak up a little bit. Yeah. Fuck. Um, that's annoying. There. Uh. So, DC 13, so pouches and um, Petrie fail. Pouches and Petrie fail, and yeah. The, the, the two squishy spellcasters that I hope should have tried to maybe pass this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you um, take. Uh, you take 24 points of cold damage. Mm. I really thought that for a second that and was going to be a three there, and I was going to be like, I'm down yeah, already. And then, and then 12. Um, uh, 12 for Doral and Andy. Just, just blasts. Cold damage, yeah? Yeah, and as that happens, uh, Auntie Ethel uh reveals herself uh that is a male version of uh <laughs> auntie ethel this is part is this is you know but it was uh so that was all she that was what she could do so pouches uh you're up um uh, i'm gonna cast scorching ray and I'm going to throw all three fiery balls at her. Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> Ooh, nice 25. Hit That's a hit. For seven points of fire damage. Yeah. 19 for five points of fire damage. And 14 for seven points. 14 misses. Um, not by a huge amount, but... So miss so seven five so twelve fire damage. Twelve fire damage. Nice. Okay, so she lets out a little like you know, a hiss and a howl like this again it's blasts off. You see this very thick skin kind of start to where it impacted it, it, it cracks and breaks like you know this suckling pig. Uh and then I'm gonna move over to this corner. Yep. Try and spread out so I don't get cone of cold it again. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Doral. Now, she is, um, she is 15 feet up in the air. Ooh. Um, so he's just ducked behind this thing, got blasted with some cold, and he is frustrated. He sort of bangs his fist on the ground, and at the same time, I'll spend my bonus action to summon up the soil from underneath his feet to cover his hand and rock and stone. Yeah. Um, then, hmm, interesting. I think I'll have him move out. Uh, let's see, five, ten, 
15, 20, 25 to there. Yep. And uh, he'll like stomp his left foot down in the ground and a piece of rock will float up and hover at about eye level and then he'll just take a big swing with his rock fist and try and launch that yep. piece of stone at him. Um, is that, how do I say that or do it? Oh, so it's a nice. spell attack? Oh, I have yeah. it up here. Excuse me, it's been a while. <laughs> so that's a 21 to hit for a total of one force points. Oh, oh crap. I know. <laughs> Damn. You know. Why did it roll? It looks like it rolled two. Shit, yeah. Um, it, it, you know, kind of slams in and it's like, it's almost like it gets there and it kind of just, it hits, but it kind of breaks apart like, you know, like a sod of like rock and just give this. <laughs> Frustrated, he just sort of hunkers down. That tickles, Jerry. Um, and What's Andy. That? Andy is currently kicking herself for forgetting to go out and buy more explosive arrows, as she loads her very last one, um, into her bow and shoots it over at. Let me make sure I'm. Yeah, I'm back to normal. So, shoots her with it. And Tita hit. Nice. Uh, yeah, she's for got AC 16. 10 piercing. Plus, I know there was something about the explosive arrows. I, I'm going to look at. Um, I think it was 2d6 um, fire damage. I thought, but I'll just. Let me just double check. Uh, 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 uh. On a hit, okay, on a hit right. the target takes 3d6 fire damage and then every creature within five feet of it, but it's just Auntie Ethel's up in the air. Um, so yeah, so she takes, so you can roll 3d6. I'm going to make a note of this. Um, every creature in five feet takes... Um, they make a deck save. Um, deck save? Uh, and then I think they take. I can copy and paste it anyway. This is. Um, that was just like my notes. Um, I'll grab it off you another time anyway. But, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It's uh, just oh, it's that. there. It's just, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's another nine damage. So it's 19 nice. damage altogether. 10 piercing, nine fire. Yeah, so. Um, bu, 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 bu. yeah, so again, it's just sort of like she's laughing, and you know, <laughs> and then rah! this, you know, arrow goes, she's not really paying attention to it, just an arrow flying at her, but it like hits her in the shoulder, and there's a there's a, a, a little pyroclasm of flame, and she's licks across her body. There's smoke, you smell more of that charred flesh, and it mingles with it. You can still see the acid bubbling on her. Um, oh, I'm sorry, she takes acid damage at the start of her turn. Um, is it another, is it 1d4, or is it, um, show spell description, come on, uh, 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 um, acid, yeah, 2d4, so you, you can roll 2d4 again, um, Nico. Different roll. Uh -huh. And I'll just... Three. Nice. Okay, so another three acid damage. So yeah, when this, you know, explodes and you can see it kind of, there's quite a large burn, like, and it seems like a chunk of her flesh um, has been, essentially, there's like a crater where it hit, you know, there was like this little explosion and it's all burned. You can see sinew, you know, her shoulder looks like one half of Harvey Dent's face in the Dark Knight. Um, and... Andy, is that so? That was your attack. Was and Are you doing anything else? Uh, Andy's staying put, so no bonus action. Nope. Okay. Um. I. Mm, yeah, it might be a bit. Might be able to make like a a go for it and try and like jump to some of the rafters, but you probably I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> Yeah, no, at the minute she's like, 
or, this bot seems to be working so far. Yep. I, I suspect it's not going to work for very long, but uh, we'll, see. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. She's got so, enough um, to be distracted by. Yeah, uh, that means then it is Petri. Um, I will... I think I'm going to have to heal myself. How is this person looking? Um, they still... They look pretty rough, not like... As as you could tell, I'm probably not on death's door, but I mean, they're pretty beat up, but I'm still floating there. Give it a little witchy hands. <clears throat> I think I might do uh, an inflict wounds and run. Yeah, you will have to... And I'm going to um... move. I can do it through 5, 10, 15, 20. So I'm going to move yeah, so my guy move here. Also. Cool. So, and I will use, so I'll cast that spell, no. inflict wounds through him. Yep. Ooh, nat 20. Oh, fuck. Um, and that's not the spell you want to be the, the nat 20 on. <laughs> no. no. Is it? Oh, did it not? It didn't roll. The, okay, so you can roll. Um, oh, damn it. Oh, sorry. Um, it's weird that it didn't. Yeah. So it's sweet. You can 21. roll another. You can roll another 3d10, right? Because it's crit. So you roll double dice. Uh, sweet. And 15. You 15. Jesus Christ. Um. 36. 36 damage. Bye, um, Ben's monster. Yeah, <laughs> damn it. Is oh um. Uh, oh damn it! Sorry, I already fucking. Okay. So, Is he still standing? Are they still standing? They are currently Elton John. As you, um, yeah, you send her Watson. <laughs> Uh, little Watson flies up, you know, and like starts kind of shooting, shimmying through the air, and then she's like looking, you know, she looks over the corner of her eye, she's like, ah, she's like, pesky fly, and like swats, and then Watson like comes in, like floats, and then lands, and then sort of like essentially you like put Oops. your hand Sorry. out, casting the spell as if to touch it, and then inside him the like his little the little potion you know the little clear liquid when he's not when he's inert it turns into this like thick black ichor and then he like no. tips himself upside down and she looks up and it drips onto her eye and then it just ah, she starts screaming and there is this awful sound it's split you have to cover your ears and it starts eating away at her face she comes like pulling her ah, she pulls her hand away and there's some of her face is stuck to her hand and it's pulling off in strings and then she's screaming and it's dripping down the acid is still bubbling but then she looks at watson like ah and her face you can see meat you can see bone you can see her skull and the empty eye socket bloodied and full of pus and it's starting to eat away at part of her shoulder and part of her neck and then she looks down at you, Petri, and she's like, ah, ah, ah. She's like, I'll eat your liver raw! <laughs> she, like, starts screaming at you, but she is clinging desperately to life on spite and evil alone. Um, but that well, was Watson, I and you still have your turn. No, so that was my turn. That was my spell. So it uses Watson's reaction to to cast it for me, but he still gets. So then I can use my bonus action to cast one of Watson's spells, I believe. Oh, I okay. Well, I, I would say then he would he would need to be in place unless he can use his movement as part of the reaction. So if he if you said he took his turn and moved up there so I, like i cast it but it says channel magic for him is a reaction the homunculus delivers a spell you cast that has a range of touch yeah but he, he would be he would need to be in position 
um, you know, to cast it because he doesn't get to move as part of the reaction. But if if he took his turn first and got in range. Because don't I, I'll cast it. That's my turn. And then as his turn, right after me, as his reaction, he, can I make um, him, can I not make him move? I guess. I'll, I'll say, well, go, going forward, we'll, no, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, um, that was, I didn't check it. That's my, um, I didn't clarify. Something Worst, I, I can always move work. myself next to him, but then I would. Yeah, no, die. no, it's all good. We'll, we'll work it that way with this time because okay. I, I fucked up. Um, but yeah, you can, you have your you can have your or you have um, his turn. Right? I was gonna yeah, then do his uh, attack or strike. So is that why it rolls twice? I don't know. I think because oh no, it he wouldn't might know that he's done. within five feet, would it? Um, yeah, it would be at disadvantage because it's a ranged attack. But so we would take the either way we we'll take the fifteen, so it's just. Oh, is, is it a is it a range? I thought that's why I moved him up. Uh, no, but he he would a creature you can reach inflict wounds is a creature you can reach. That's a, it's a touch spell. Yeah, he so he would have needed to be in. He would have needed to be next to her to deliver the, the touch spell. Um. Yeah. Anyway, so. Um. um I'm just looking here. Oh, sorry. I see what you mean. For the ranged is his thing. Sorry, I thought we were still on my spell. Okay, that's fine. Disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, because it's but it. it uh, yeah, I was. I wasn't just, following. He just off. narrowly, narrowly misses his pew pew. Um, do I roll again, or do we just take the lowest? I don't know why it rolled twice. Um, or is that just oh, the yeah, attack? Roll? Well, you can. That's the attack. Um, roll. We'll roll again. Yeah, roll, roll, roll again, and we'll take that as the disadvantage. And then, okay, so I don't know why it's, um, I don't know why, so yeah, he, but I think he, I don't roll damage twice. No, no, I think because he, he missed it because it was a 15 and a, Oh, okay. 17, I think. So he, I don't know why it rolled it twice. He would have had disadvantage anyway because he was for the range because he was next to Auntie Ethel. So but, does 15 not hit then if their AC is 15? No, no, no. 15, no, six, uh, 16. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, sorry. Um, I'm going to move away. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. And. Ethel, it's now Auntie Ethel. Uh, so she's going to take 2d4 acid damage. So looking at how it should work, oh, turn. Nico can hold the spell and then use her homunculus to move up and during the homunculus's turn, cast through it. So she yeah, has to burn both her own reaction and its reaction to do it. My reaction? Oh, yeah, because you have to both. hold the spell into its turn. Oh, okay. So you can say, I'm holding oh, a spell and I'm going to cast this through. Oh, okay. yeah, I That's see. That's what this. I would homunculus do. Delivers a, delivers a spell you cast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if it had been That's in position, not... you can just, like, cast yeah. through it. But you can also hold the spell as a reaction and then move the homunculus and then blast through it. Okay. Let's, let's yeah so yeah that's, that's fine so, yeah so you would have yeah so you would have been able to do it. yeah so you can roll 2d4 for yes. the acid damage for um for anti ethel at the start of her turn two two so two seven um, <laughs> Take that. but um anti ethel uh Oh, hang on, let me check. Ooh, um, one sec. Just need to check something. <laughs> uh, just for our chat there, to 
I'm not even going to try and pronounce that username, but to the guy, the new first time viewer asking about what program, it is, the map was made in Incarnate, yes. But yeah, uh, the guy who make, made it, he has a lot of custom assets he's made over the years that he's uploaded to Incarnate. So he he has a bit of extra, a few extra pieces that he uses. Yeah. But yeah, the, the base is Incarnate. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great map. I had to grab it off Peter. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think suddenly, um, Auntie Ethel, don't know how I'm going to represent this. Um, no, I guess not. Auntie Ethel suddenly like starts to fade and like wisps of smoke and mist start to curl around her and eventually she uh, becomes this she becomes a mist and she's saying that you know I'll be back I'll be back for all of you and she I'm to spell oh no I'm okay. joking I don't have it oh yeah it's third level <laughs> it's third level spell I just wanted to give you, I got give so you some grief. I got so excited. I was like, wait no, a minute. Not yet. Not yet. It is coming, yeah. though. It is coming. Well, until, you know, until the 25th of January. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Box? I'm still like, what, what is going to happen with Counterspell? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she uh, looking and give me... Ba -ba -ba. Okay, she starts moving <coughs> five, ten. Oh no, she's actually five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. She's still above you, Doral, but she's just turned into a mist. Um, and she seems to be making her way over towards the left side of the building. It, it's like you can still kind of see her, like you can see like the suggestion of, of a humanoid form features sort of like almost like swimming through the air in this mist form. Um, uh, and you can still see bits of the acid are kind of trailing off of her. But that was Auntie Ethel and Pouches, it is your turn. Do I know how to damage her in this form? Like, do I know anything about this kind of magic? Give me an arcana check. Oh, no, I'm very sorry. Uh, she would be 5, 10. Sorry, she can only move 10 feet as a gas. Uh, 18. Yeah, you know, so gaseous form. Um, you're pretty sure it's concentration. Um, they're slowed. They turn into gas. So, she, you know, she is now a mist, so she can move as a mist would, you know, to you know, get through any space that a mist could. Um, but other than that, she can, um, she can, um, uh, what you call it? She, she can be like targeted. If you, she, like, it wouldn't hurt as much. It would be kind of like hitting a ghost, you know? Um, but she can be, she can be damaged. Okay. But I, I don't know any but specific non, damage non types that's, not, not no you don't as far as you're aware nothing is better or worse except that she would be resistant to magic oh resistant to non-magical damage you know attacks i mean you know okay so just hitting her with a, a sword isn't gonna do as much damage. Uh, in that case i am gonna go with scorching ray again yeah go for it I think the is the same. 22 that's a hit for nine points of fire damage, please make a concentration check. Yeah. <laughs> I will break her concentration this Best. way. What was that? Nine. Uh, Thirteen. So that one's a miss. Yeah. And ten. Fuck, that was terrible. Uh, so, what's that? So nine total yeah, damage. It is. 
Okay, so nine. So it's like you see the first scorching ray is like it seems to burn away a lot of the mist, and you hear that like a scream of pain, but it sounds distant. Sounds very far away. Like it sounds like it's off, coming from somewhere off in the distance. And it's like, ah, it's burnt it. And so she's kind of like, you see like half of her and she's still kind of groping at the air. And it's like, oh, you know, you're going to get her. And then the other two just just seem to veer off, you know, um, unfortunately, and they slam. They can sort of momentarily catch one of the curtains on fire and it just burns it up, but then it dissipates into smoke. And you scorch one of the walls. Um, but she is still there, but there's only the barest suggestion of her. Um, and I don't know if you're moving or... No, I'm going to just stay where I am. Okay. Uh, Doral. Actually, uh, actually, I will move just yeah, a little yeah. bit. I'm going to move sure. up to here. Okay. Get a little bit more central in the room. Doral. Um, pretty confused by the, the way she looks at the moment. The... He's frustrated that he can't reach her, and he, he just tries for the same thing again. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. toss a rock at her. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's not that Let's see. So that is a 12 to try and hit. Fortunately, not a hit. Ah. And you, you send it flying and it just kind of right you see you know it kind of brushes the mist but it then it, it goes flying through the window and just and there's a you know a sudden gust of air kind of blowing in the window I, I just shattered. sort of says uh, more than damn it you can't us rafter slink and stench guy come down here and fight <laughs> Uh, uh, Andy, unless Doral is like moving or anything. No, oh, that's my turn. It's your turn. Oh, Andy. He has no idea what to do. To be honest, um, what do you shoot at a mist? Um. He's just gonna chuck an arrow at it and see what happens. Yeah. Basically. Uh, arrow. Where's my normal arrows? There we go. That is an eleven to hit. This is, I just, think. It it kind of it just goes through the borders of the mist and misses the the heart of it, which. Is Dandy um, bonus action moving? Doing anything else? Yeah, I think um, bonus action at this stage. Andy's going to jump down from her perch um, and move. Okay, if you give me an acrobatics check, just to let, if you're just dropping straight, like fifteen feet, just to. Yeah, it should be just... pretty easy, but just so you don't like. She's going to walk on and bust your ankle. Oh yeah, yeah. You... Okay. Um, so she will hop down. You do down. it suddenly, and you hear from in your cloak. Ember <laughs> <Just, laughs> did not know you were going to jump off the window. <laughs> it's like, not prepared. Uh, uh, so I'll go 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, I'll move there. I'll climb up onto the bed, I suppose. And... Yeah, I'll move to there. Cool. That's that's Andy. Okay. Um, and now, Petri. It's your turn. Hey, you. Um, well, Nico's up there. I'm. I'm also gonna. Um, she's gonna stow her bow. And, and switch to daggers. Okay. Switch just okay. So the bow is stowed and daggers are drawn. Good. Okay, so Andy is gone, so the tree is up next. 
Petrie is just before, well, Petrie and Watson just before Ethel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to still hiding. <clears throat> Was my thing. Uh, 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 Rule 20 is frustrating sometimes. No. Okay. Um, I would like to. Can I? I'd like to catapult one of my vials. Can I do that? Um, yeah. You want to uh, catapult? Yeah. To 90 feet in a direction in front of you. Uh, they make a deck save. Yep. Uh, so. Oh wait, hang on. I thought this did damage. Uh, oh, it does. When the yeah, object yeah, strikes yeah. something, the object, yeah, 3d8 bludgeoning. Nice. So you've, you've got two catapulses. In the yeah, like he's like hiding, hiding behind the doorway monster. there, like throwing acid vials, yeah. just catapulting. Yeah. I am just pointing um, out it's still a mist monster. Yeah. Oh, so. mm, well the acid not, I guess, bludgeoning damage. Thank yeah. you. Well, hang on, 18. Um, so is it... There's no way to really do that. Is, is catapult, um, is it... Just, just no, normal damage. No half, there's no half on a, on a success. Um, no, I was pointing out to Nico that it, it, it's still a miss monster, so... Yeah. Her being like uh, me, she'd probably know not to just try and hit it with something. Mm-hmm. Well... But no, um, there's no half on success. No, if you well, if you give me, um, well, no, I think it it just um, uh, what you call it? It it just it's non magical damage, like it's yeah, it's still magic magical bludgeoning, I think. Or does it specify that it's? That's just his bludgeoning. Oh yeah, so it's from a spell, so I think it would still. But um, but um, so. Unfortunately, though, she rolled an 18 on the deck save, so this vial just goes flying and then shatters against the wall, passing through some of the mist but not hitting her core. Uh, but you still got um, bonus action if you want to command uh, Watson to do something. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll have yeah, so I'll have uh, him do that same attack. He's not. Close at the moment. Yep. I don't know why it's doing. Ah, oh, nice. That's funny. Uh, so, yeah, so you can roll 4d4 and then we'll add 2 to it. So, uh, sorry, plus, uh, plus 4. Well, 14. So, um, you, uh, you know, it's this vial has gone smash, and you can see all of, all of you can see Auntie Ethel, the misty form is floating towards the window, um, specifically the hole in the window created by the rock, um, and it's like, Damn it, girl. Reach, is reaching out for the window, like about, and you can, you know, you see the breeze sort of like almost drawing her out. And then suddenly, you know, if you're looking in from the window, you just see Auntie Ethel, like, <gasps> and just <laughs> something just comes flying through the middle of her and just like a little, little dart of light. And then it's like, is it like full on like anime hole, style? Like, Ooh. like a hole, like a hole through the middle and then just with this screaming howl she just starts to like dissipate and fade and fade and then Watson is like standing there and he's like well, wouldn't she just come back to normal form but it wasn't her it wasn't her um, it wasn't her turn yet no oh, no I mean she, di she died so she stopped concentrating so wouldn't we just have like a 30 pound Oni plump or 300 pound Oni I'm guessing Oni I like my well yeah so she you know, and you see Watson just like, <laughs> and then like, you know, and then yes, the from seemingly out of nowhere, it's like it gathers, and then there's like a little swirl of mist, and then like kind of a blink, and then you just see 
Auntie Ethel fall 15 feet, crashing down. Uh, well, she'd be dead. Where is this fucking thing? She crashes down hard onto the floor, breaking as a splash. There's this smell of kind of, you know, mold and algae, you know, like splatting up into the air and floorboards you can see underneath splinter and crack there's a loud crashing sound and then she lays limp there is silence for a moment i'd like to you hear soft sobbing coming from back here okay i was about to say i'd like to go investigate but I'll, i'll head towards that noise I'll like make my way up the stairs over here and just pull that curtain back. So I'm just gonna. And he's heading over towards Auntie Ethel's corpse. Of course um, she is. He Say, wants to Andy, focus. This uh, might be a moment for Ember. Um, Why? Ember doesn't want you. to smell the nasty thing. And she doesn't like to get her paws wet. Maybe it'll make the kid a little bit less afraid of us. Maybe it could help her. Child. And Andy will Andy will take em- take Ember out and crying. hand it over to you <laughs> to like. So em- you can take Ember. She's not going near a child. <laughs> yeah. I, I thanks, and I, I head over with the punches. Okay, so. Behind the curtain. Yeah, there is a little girl. She's facing the wall. She's like waking up. She's like crying and she's rubbing her eyes. And she's waking up like a, a child that's had a bad nightmare. And she's just saying, yeah, Mommy, Mommy. <laughs> she's like, around I'm going to be like, it's like okay. Freaking out. It's okay. We're going to take you home. Everything's going to be okay. And then everybody's like, Look, here's Dora with a kitten for you to pet. Uh, Hey there, are, are and then uh, Ellie, Ellie Potts by she any kind chance? Kind of like crawls, all, yeah, like she's like, oh. and she like. I'm gonna use that opportunity to fuck off, <laughs> like leave, yeah. make this Doral's problem. Yeah, Doral, you give me, um, give me a persuasion check. Sure. I'm actually or charisma. Or, or charisma. Yeah, yeah, persuasion. yeah. So <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of say here, no, never worry. We're the brown cloaks, and we're here yeah, to help. Yeah. She, she starts looking, and she like is a little bit, and then she clocks the cloaks, and then she remembers it's kind of like um, you know, mother telling her it's like if you're in trouble, and like look, you know, if you see someone in a you know a brown cloak, that's who you go tell, you know. And then she kind of like suddenly she kind of like shanks up, and she like kind of grabs on your cloak, and is kind of tugging your cloak, and is like, I want to go home. I, I sort of hunch down and say, I'm I'm sure this would have been really scary, but we have a, a brave friend here who can maybe help you. This is Ember. And I hand over the kitten to her. Aww. Ember instinctively is like, curls up, doing, starts doing the, you know, purring and like pushing into her. And... Very nice. Isn't that much better? Let's get you out of here. She's petting her and she, yeah, she's kind of like, she steps down and she's kind of looking at the, you know, she's stepping, you know, barefoot on, you know, the on the floor, but she doesn't seem too bothered by it. You know, I, she's a kid from the drains. Um, like, I sort of tuck her into my this. cloak and sort of attempt to hide the body from her sight lines and keep her distracted with the cat and sort of head down south and out the front door yeah, and as like, i go uh, past everyone where's... else i just sort of say uh i'll i'll help ellie here we'll see you outside yeah she's like says to you so she's going away she's like where's auntie Ethel?" and she's kind of like moving away and Andy's over with auntie ethel and andy is quite rapidly stabbing her repeatedly in the neck because Andy does not need another threatening presence over her life, threatening to come back. So mm-hmm. she's like, Yeah, there's just the, just like, 
Um, sound of meanwhile, Patches has spotted the chest behind the curtain and has gone that way. He's like, oh, chest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chest contains interesting things. So I'm going to be opening that chest if I can. Open the chest. Yeah, um, it's full of bones. <laughs> um, they, uh, yeah, um, they're, yeah. So it's, I mean, it might be of use, <laughs> but um, yeah. They, I'm gonna, like just is. like poke around a little bit. Anything under the bones? Um, there's some hair and fingernails it's it's pretty uh it's pretty uh gruesome nope closing the chest mm. uh, coming back around i'm just gonna tell andy i'm like there's a chest back there you do not want to open it chest and she stops stabbing <laughs> uh, i'm gonna be like, like halfway trust me on this the... one you do not want to open it i'm gonna have nightmares about what's in there tonight yeah it, it's uh it's pretty. It's pretty grim. There's, you know. And he will give um, one last stab, and then stand up and like wipe her blade off a bit, and and be like, "How grim." Let's just say I found the rest of the kids. What did you say there, Fiona? You broke up. Too grim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just gonna then like just begin investigating everything that's up here on stage. Yeah, it, it's you know it, again, it's 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 pretty like like if you could give me an, give me an investigation check. Um, I am very good at those. Yes, twenty nine. That is it, that is a big boy. <laughs> I, you know, um, hang on. Um, they're actually. Um, there wasn't supposed to be anything in here, but I'm going to say, um, <laughs> you know. It was so hidden, not even the DM knew about it. <laughs> nat 20. Yeah, Nat 20. I'm like, oh, I'm going to fill um, some time while Ben looks up a, a, a table of some sort. Yes. I'm outside and I, I take a piece of the wrappings that are wrapped around my hands off and. Uh, attach a rock to one end of them and start showing the kid how to use it as a sort of cat toy. Here, see, if if you do this and drag it across the ground real slow, she'll chase it. I've been training uh, or trying to train Ember to be like a pickpocket type thing. <laughs> so I'm going to guess she's pretty well, good you, at this game. You mean you're training Ember to be a cat burglar? Burglar, exactly. <laughs> uh, so she she should be pretty, sh- or he should be pretty sharp, you know. This whole catch the rock game. <laughs> Sorry, um, give me one second. <laughs> Chat says Tram finds himself. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, in a piece yeah. at last. We don't want that to happen. We don't, we don't want Tram to become well adjusted. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. That would make Sorry, things guys, too easy my, for um, everyone else. My uh, internet has decided to be really slow. Are there any sacks or anything around the place? Because, uh, yeah, as, as grim as that chest is. If we don't take those remains back, they're going to bloody send us back to fetch them again. Like, that's evidence or those, you know, they're the the missing kids or whatever. So yeah, I mean, you could take the chest, and take it, you know. Just, you could just carry the chest. Okay, yeah, so Andy's going to go do that. She was going to investigate the smelly, nasty bed, but she's going to go get that chest and <laughs> bring it with her. We open it. Uh, we can put it in my. Do I have a bag of holding, or do I just have the ability to make one? Um, I assume. Well, like you, you weren't using the focus or the thing, so I assume. Yeah, you said you you brought the bag of holding and the alchemy jug as your and the jug infusions. Yeah. yeah, so you you have a bag of holding. Um, okay, well, we can put the. Can we put the chest in there? Yeah, I'd say yeah. at this stage. Um, are you outside with yeah. Daryl and, and Ember? 
you're down here. Assume that I've dragged the chest as far as you, and then we stick it in your sack. Slip it in. Okay. Slip it um, in. Uh, pouches, sneak away from you, kids. Yeah, you find um, underneath a lot of this stuff, like like strange personal effects. There's like a mummified finger on a, on a not not um, like child size. It's it's quite long. It actually looks similar to one of Auntie Ethel's. It's like you know, it's it's the, like a long like clawed finger um, on a necklace. Um, it seems to be inert, like you know, it's just kind of mummified. Um, there is um, it looks like a bird skull but um, it's strangely uh, like it just looks exactly like a bird skull but it's it's strangely um, tough like you know as if it was made out of like iron or something but you can't it seems inert but then like under all this random junk and it's just piled up with filth and like straw and, and all this stuff there is um, on its side uh, a little bottle the stopper has like come off a little bit uh, in a sort of spiky curved little bottle, a uh, sort of a lilac colored fluid. Um, and it's a common item, but there are two doses of uh, perfume of bewitching. Um, mm -hmm. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I, wonder, I think I have Xanathar, so it should. Uh, but it's basically yep. advantage on charisma checks with like humanoids for an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of them um, onto your into your inventory because unfortunately I can't share the compendium because I didn't create the game. But um, sweet, yeah, I just put them to my. Woo. Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, there'll be. Um, I don't know if you want to either put two doses or if you want me to drop a second one in. Um, uh, no, I'll just put it as two. There. Sweet. Yeah, so it seems like maybe she had been using this to like cover up, partly as well to cover up the the stench, you know, that she had this sort of, you know, it would fool, she could fool a lot of the senses, but not sense of smell. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, with, um, sorry about that. So unless, is there anything in particular anyone else wants to do in the theater before bringing Ellie home? No, I think I think we can bring Ellie home. Okay. So, yeah, all of you were, you know, you're thinking back on this. It was just, you know, a few days ago. Um, you know, you brought Ellie home safely. Her mother was overjoyed, just bursting into just tears of joy and but still kind of sobbing and holding each other. It, luckily, it or you can, can't be sure what Ellie might remember, you know, further down the line in her life, or if she remembers anything at all, or if the Oni's charms, you know, she seemed to have been put into a magical sleep for who knows when, you know, something bad would have happened to her, but she was, she was asleep, so she was dreaming the entire time. So it seems like she hadn't seen the Oni in its true form. So she may be spared much uh, horror later in her life. And she seems, you know, seems, seems all right. She's a little shaken when you brought her home. Her mother was just had delighted and, and her father. And it was good. It felt, it really felt like one of those times where it was good to be a brown cloak and to, to help somebody, you know, and then sitting there, all of you, four of you, in the briefing room a couple days later, as you've been waiting, Sergeant Stein finally she walks out um, of the, uh, the kind of like office, like quarters ahead, the captain's quarters. She opens the door and she's walking out with Captain Galloway, sort of, you know, very limping slightly, but rather confidently his prosthetic um, his prosthetic leg and he's he's coming out to brief you and you can see um, in the office sort of leaning back on a chair giving you a glance is a man with um, kind of like 
shoulder length, brown hair. Um, he's got a little like mole on his cheek. He's wearing simple like grey leathers, and um, he's got like a scroll case on his hip. Uh, but uh, pouches and Andy, will you give me a perception check? Uh, 16. 11. Yeah, so you're kind of, you know, you're distracted. You're looking, Andy, like at his at his belt, looking for a, you know, a coin purse or whatever he's got. Um, but Pouch is just looking up and down and something vaguely familiar about the person. Uh, and then you notice um, their um, boots have this uh, little um, pattern on the heel. It's just like a little, it's just a little geometric pattern on the heel. But uh, you've seen it before uh, because those are Briona Belmont's boots, the uh, agent of the middlemen, the smugglers, and uh, master of the skies. So they kind of look at you and. The look lingers for a second and they turn back you know and face forward again so it's Briona talking to to the two captains it seems like was talking to Captain Galloway and, and your sergeant Leia Stein and as they do that you know Galloway is like kind of re realizes you're looking in and kind of closes it all behind him and he <laughs> leans on the desk for a second and then he looks at you all and says Right. Got a new mission for you. And uh, that's where we're going to end it. And we'll pick yeah, up yeah. Yeah. in two weeks. Well, uh, I hope uh, I hope uh, that was an all right session back after the holidays. And uh, if hope you and uh, anyone watching enjoyed it and didn't mind me shrieking into the mic um <laughs> like a mad woman and <laughs> yeah uh so we will be back uh, we will be back in two weeks um same time uh, 7 p.m gmt um and we'll have uh, just on the channel uh just remember every tuesday friday and sunday we'll have games so this tuesday um we've got fellowship of the fallen um next friday is the software and saga uh, and next Sunday will be more Violet Madness, and then we'll be back to more Fellowship of the Fallen, and then there'll be Humblewood Friday, and it will be Cloak Sunday uh, again. So don't worry, you won't have to see me for two weeks. Uh, so, you know, don't worry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh, that's everything, unless there's anything else. Anyone have any uh, anything to add? No. Nah. Anything anybody wants to? Good. No, no dude, uh, this is fun. Thanks so much for good to be back. on. <laughs> yeah, I love Patree. He's my favorite can't, now. Can't wait for Patree to get characters. more, uh, yeah, <laughs> involved with everyone. Yeah, it's awesome. It's just more and more havoc and chaos being brought into the party. I love it. Ben just yeah. sucks up so that Hobo, Hobo reincarnates him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Zombie Patree. Um, he, nice. uh, he also has the invisibility spell, so we can have some fun with that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> one of the first things I took. Look, yeah, <laughs> Patria, so, Patria and Tram running through the, the barracks. We invisible. can cause some trouble. <laughs> invisible and cat casting catapult, pretending to be poltergeists. Oh no, the barracks is haunted. <laughs> Shit flying everywhere. Okay, They're all walking so, along, uh, looking at the roof. Yeah, always look up. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll see you uh, again in two weeks and uh yeah hope everyone has a good night morning afternoon wh whatever time it is for you and we'll see you next time. bye cheers everyone bye bye